Today's episode of the One Piece Podcast is brought to you by viewers like you. You could subscribe on Patreon at patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast and get exclusive One Piece Podcast goodies. This month, we have an exclusive episode featuring everyone on this show as we go through the end game for One Piece. So what happens at the end of the, at the, end of the show? Are we going to be satisfied with what we read or not? And what kind of things do we think are going to happen? Is Blackbeard going to be the final villain? Sakazuki, how will things kind of come together there? Uh, and we talk about that all on our exclusive episode. And that is for patrons who subscribe for $10 or more on our Patreon account. That's patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast. We have a lot of other stuff there, including our entire backlog. Uh, so that seasons two through seven are exclusively available for those who uh, subscribe for $3 or more at patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast. But any amount helps make our podcast bigger and better. It allows us to get better equipment. It allows us to pay for server costs and do some cool stuff in the future, including more conventions, more videos, like you may have seen Alex's from MatsuriCon. All of that is because of your subscriptions on Patreon and viewers like you for just listening to the podcast, visiting the OnePiecePodcast.com website. Um, and we really appreciate everything everyone out there has been doing. So you could keep an eye on patreon.com slash one piece podcast for updates as they come. And the exclusive episode should be available just about the time that this episode comes out. So check that out again, patreon.com slash one piece podcast. But why don't we get into the show? This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 434 for the week of Monday, September 5th, 2016. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And my name is Steve. On today's show, we have a very special guest, translator of One Piece in Weekly Shonen Jump, Stephen Paul's with us. Hey, Stephen. Greetings. I'm glad to be here. We have ANN and One Piece Podcast columnist and our anime recap host, Sam, with us. Hey, Sam. Garchu, everyone. Garchu to you as well. And, of course, finally, we have, as we call him, YouTube <laughs> sensation, Roger Space with us. Hey, Roger. I'm living the dream, relaxing, playing video games all weekend, and doing absolutely nothing. It comes with the life of a YouTube sensation. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so before we get started, there's a bunch of cool stuff going on. Uh, by the way, new news on the website, uh, a lot of cool stuff, including the voice of Dogstorm, which I think you get to hear a little of in this week's anime episode, uh, One Piece calendars, if you like male or female fan service, uh, and a trailer of uh, One Piece Season 8 Voyage 4, that's all out on OnePiecePodcast.com, so check that out. Um, Have we determined who uh, is playing Sabo? Because she's in the trailer. A lot, are- and... I couldn't tell you. People were guessing Alexis Tipton, but I don't know if that's been confirmed. Yeah, I heard, um, what's her name? Is it Erica Mendez from Kill a Kill? Hmm, oh, is she playing it, it, that's, uh, Oh No, uh, it's, it sounds a bit like her. And I know she was doing something at Funimation recently, but... Oh, yeah, I, I was going to say, well, it, it's a little weird see them with, doing that. with the unions, I would think, right? I don't know how that eh, works. At this point, there's been so many like LA talent on the One Piece dub. That's true, too. I don't, yeah. and I don't even the know. important... <laughs> I was going to say the important thing to note is that uh, the person who's doing the voice of Steli is yours truly. So ah. that's what's important. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Congrats. I wish. Um, yeah. No, I wish. Yeah. Um, uh, so, and also, uh, Chow has a new uh, etymology compilation for everyone from East Blue and Skypea through Skypea. Uh, so p- please give that a read as well if you haven't. Uh, and also, there is no manga chapter next week, and as promised, we will bring our first of four panels from MatsuriCon next week, um, and the first one will be our One Piece podcast panel, uh, since I think that's the most timely. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, and after that, we'll probably do uh, the Funimation <laughs> panel, uh, the One Piece cast tells all. So, I think the, the, the podcast panel is a good one. There was, there was a whole lot of chuckles. Yes, it was a fun one. I think you guys will really yeah. enjoy that. Plus, it's an hour and a half or something, so it's it's a regular mm-hmm. size episode. Uh, so yeah, for on for the people these days now, they're like, "This episode is short." <laughs> uh, it's fifty five minutes. Oh my god! Um, I was expecting to spend all thirteen <laughs> hours of being awake today listening to a one single podcast episode. What am I going to do? We've almost done that. Uh, <laughs> 
we have done that. We have a backlog <laughs> for that. And if you subscribe to us on Patreon, you could listen to all of those. Uh, we're also going to have a Patreon exclusive episode, the one for August. It's coming out in September because of the holiday. So uh, you could check that out at patreon.com slash one piece podcast. Subscribe and get uh, get that. I think it's for $10 and up, you get the exclusive episode. But for $3 and up, you get our entire back catalog. Um, also want to mention, and uh, with uh, Roger's inspiration, we have our merchandise now available on Redbubble. Uh, you could check out all of the various logos and a banana me, uh, all available uh, on our shop. You go to OnePiecePodcast.com and you click the store link at the top of the screen. Um, and... I want to also mention uh, we're going to be at New York Comic Con, Steve, probably, but not definitely at this very moment. Uh, Cannot confirm or deny. I will definitely be there since I live here and I have no excuse. <laughs> um, so we're going to do a meetup at Bryant Park at 2 p.m. on Saturday. I believe it's October 7th uh, is the Saturday of the convention. So um, please check us out there. It's always a lot of fun, the, the Bryant Park meetups. Uh, we'll put more information out on that on our social media this week. Uh, and last but not least, if you would like to join the One Piece podcast crew on our website, we have website positions open. Uh, I'm going to say our editorial writer position is closed. We've had a lot of entries for that, and I think we're going to be bringing on a, a bunch of new people on that side. But we're definitely looking for news reporters, uh, any editors, um, and definitely anyone from Japan who'd like to help us out with the podcast. Uh, for anyone who does join us, provided you have a microphone, you will periodically get to come on the show. That's one of the perks. Um, so please uh, apply, onepiecepodcast.com. Uh, I think that's everything today. We have a manga recap of Chapter 838 and uh, Episode 755. Sam, do you want to give us a little preview of, of your thoughts on that? I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, it's probably my favorite of these uh, three Zo episodes so far. Wow. Now that's high that's saying a lot. That's yeah. saying a lot, actually. Yeah. They've been good. Uh, so we're going to do that as well. So uh, why don't we get into the show? Okay. Well... This is the anime recap for episode 755, Garchoo! The Straw Hats Reunited. Uh, the title card begins at 5 minutes and 29 seconds. I am your host, Sam, and today with us we have Zach. How's it going, Zach? Garchoo, Sam. Garchoo to you. <laughs> so it's just you and me today. Uh, running down the staff credits real quick. The we're pretty, we're pretty cool, by... though. That's fine, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're popular with the kids. Yeah, the kids love us. Uh, the screenplay this week is by Tomohiro Nakayama. Episode director and storyboard artist is by Masahiro Hosoda. And animation director is Atsuko Kawamura. Uh, Better job than up. I could do. So. Anyway, yeah. the episode begins as everybody is trying to avoid the rain eruption as the elephant is sort of raising its trunk in the air to spray water onto its back. Uh, Luffy hops onto the back of Warney and Wanda, and with alongside Wanda and Carrot, and I'm just noticing now just how long Warney's legs are. I never noticed before. Um, They're just the as long as uh, Zunesha's. Yeah. Basically, the the water erupts. Everyone's running away. This is uh, very clearly a like a Naotoshi Shida scene. The guy who did the Gear Four transformation. Yeah, uh, it was the, like it was like nice to a fault. Like the is yeah like, yeah. I don't even know how to um, describe that animation. Like. It, Especially with the water, like it's exactly like uh, when Luffy faced off against the three admirals in Marineford, and like yeah. the pillar of water is like all shaky and stuff. It's basically that effect, but just like all over the place. It was a um, little too much, if I had a complaint, just because it like I, it. Um, I don't even know. It like. wasn't. It wasn't as shiny as he normally makes it, so I did. I wasn't. I didn't mind it so much. It wasn't uh, but, fluid enough for water. Is my thing. Mm. Like it was so fluid, and it kind of had these like. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm just going to so talk. So it's, it's the uncanny valley for water, basically. Yeah. Um, so basically, I uh, actually really like the little animation as uh, they sort of raise out of the water and like Wanda and Kara are like shaking the water off. And they notice that uh, Luffy is gone. He's getting washed away by the tide. So uh, continuing with the crazy animation, Carrot has to just sort of jump from tree to tree uh, and eventually has to grab him and, and actually saves him from a shark. This whole sequence is filler, actually, I think. I had to double check the... Uh, 
Uh, I could check for you in a moment. Um, I did. Che- I did check the manga earlier, and I, oh. I don't think Luffy get knocked got knocked off the alligator. I'm, I'm a volume too far, but I'll I'll, I'll make sure right now. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just I really think this is a great sequence. I think Carrot looks really great throughout these episodes in general, uh, and we cut to uh, Kinemon and Konjuro climbing the elephant on their new uh, drawing of a cat, which is not quite as cute as Ryunosuke. What's the name um, of it again? Uh, it's Neko something. something Neko Zaimon. Neko Zaimon. Okay. That's Neko Zaimon. Uh, and Neko Zaimon does not last very long because the water comes rushing down the side of the elephant and just washes them off, uh, washes away the drawing. Uh, drawings are not, uh, they, don't, they don't stick around after you're, you're water. You're right, that well. was filler, but I, I mm-hmm. believed it. The fact that I had to look it up, that's probably good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of this stuff in these last few episodes in general, I feel like they've been really good at sort of extrapolating stuff that's in the manga in a way that feels natural. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so we see, uh, Wanda is sort of explaining the sort of, their very advanced like filtration system where the whole city is designed to sort of, uh, move the water into a specific way and like, uh, filter it to be good for drinking water, which is actually very smart. Uh, Beppo, we see Beppo swinging on the trees, trying to catch up with them. It, it looks actually super cute, and he's like, "Hey, Luffy, I can't leave here. Uh, so tell Law and that we're you know in the woods and that we're safe and everything." And this is when Wanda and Kara have to sort of explain the Duke's dog from and Cat Viper to Luffy. Uh, Usopp is uh, sort of using his lens. I, I noticed that uh, Usopp has a little, a little zoom feature on his goggles, but his goggles don't look like they should be able to do that. Yeah, uh, the manga is exactly the same. I'm reading along with you right now, and it seems yeah. yeah. Uh, he he sees Luffy with the minks, and he sees uh, he's like sort of freaking out when he sees Carrot chomping on Luffy's neck. <laughs> uh, but we get a little we get a little scene of uh, Carrot nibbling on Luffy's ear, and I'm a little jealous there. But um, take, uh, take we see Flash. Easy. I know I'm getting I'm getting all hot and bothered. Uh, for clamped for clamped. Uh, anyway, keep for going. Clamped. Uh, we get some. Uh, Flashbacks of uh, Dogstorm being tortured by Z- by Jack, and uh, I've noticed that like Wanda is sort of crying a lot in these episodes. She's got this like a single teardrop just sort of building in her ducts. Uh, then suddenly, Law once they sort of arrive at their destination, well, there was uh, a Law, little flashback too. Yeah, do you mention that already? The f- to uh, yeah. Well, but my, my, uh, my favorite gag is you see each of their faces, and Luffy does that uh, Amazon Lily face. It's like what. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Law uses his chamber's ability to just sort of pop everyone in right in front of Luffy and, and the group. Uh, only Zoro and Robin uh, land on their feet. Uh, Usopp and Frankie just sort of topple. <laughs> There's a really funny scene where Usopp is like sit, standing behind Zoro and like lifting up his arm and trying to like imitate him and, and scare off the minx. <laughs> uh, but impression. then, yeah, <laughs> obviously, obviously the minx are not uh, enemies. So. Uh, this is when we meet the guards of this like city that are about to enter, and it's like a lion and a goat man. Uh, then this Not is a when toad we goat, s- a regular goat. This is when we cut to uh, Nami, like sleeping safe and sound, sort of on this big bed of a sheep's belly, uh, and she's in this uh, very provocative purple dress, uh, and then we, s- you know, chopper person crying like he's got good news. Oh, they're at the crew. They're here. Uh, and then they enter the city of the Minx where everyone's guard chewing and, and uh, great scene. You know, this welcoming. Is, yeah. This was music from the most recent soundtrack that we went mm-hmm. over. The yeah. I noticed that. Soundtrack, uh, I really like it. We'll be doing the gold yeah. soundtrack. It'll be when Alex is back. Keep going. Um, I need to mention that. <laughs> yeah. And Zoro, Zoro starts to ask them about like, well, aren't Minx, don't Minx hate people? And, uh, the uh, and Wanda just sort of responds, "Well, to to us, you Taya guys are just monkey minks with less hair. Uh, we judge somebody by their character, not their race." And but then oh. she goes on goes on to talk to refer to humans as lesser minks because they don't have fur. Oh, is, I don't know. Sounds a little racist to me. Yeah, but, it's, uh, it's a little counterintuitive. So yeah, uh, Nami and Chopper are making their way out to greet the crew, and they keep getting stopped by all the all the different minks who want to guard you with them and cuddle. And and Usopp is shocked that that is so different than what I expected. I thought everyone was eaten and it turns out that they're all just crazy friendly. Uh, they charge at the rest of the, the crew sort of charges at each other, like happy to see each other. Uh, Luffy is like asking, Hey, how's Sanji? And this is when things sort of take a dramatic turn just as, uh, Nami glomps right onto him and hugs him very tightly. And, and 
she's now seems very kind of distraught about something and says, uh, we're sorry. We're so sorry. Uh, and that is basically where the episode wraps up. Also where the end of volume 80 wraps up, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think, Sam? I really like this episode. Like I said, this is one that really uh, extrapolates on the manga's content to create sort of the small filler moments that feel completely natural. Uh, and I think that in general, I think the minks just look really great. And Zoe just looks really great. I, I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I think the music stood out really well here. I wasn't uh-huh. sure how that track actually would sound in the show. And I really liked yeah. it. Um, kind of evocative of the water seven one even. Um, yeah, exactly. I, and there's just, there's so much that like happens in this episode, like compared to the other two where it's like, there's a few moments, but it's mostly just sort of, uh, atmospheric stall. padding. Yeah. But this one, like it just felt like there's just a million different scenes and a million different jokes and cool pieces of animation and stuff. The thing is this arc, I think is very, I mean, as you kind of said, is conducive to going slow. And I think it, mm-hmm. um, it's nice to take our time. Even Luffy is like, Oh, after we get everyone together, I want to just explore and look around this Island. And we kind of get to do that in the anime because it takes its time, you know, with mm-hmm. everything. And they're actually like, I don't know. I feel like Toei, the, this is the difference between, I think a, a good, you know, padded episode and a bad one is one that gets creative with its padding, which I don't think Toei always does. Sometimes they just sort of are on autopilot, but I feel like in these last three episodes, I felt like there is a definitely, and in, there's a definite engagement, probably just like as far back as the actual like screenwriting of the episode. They're thinking like, OK, well, we need to make this bit a little longer by thinking about this. And and I just think it makes the whole episode is better, a lot better. I agree. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Yeah, um, no. it's a good episode. It was, they've been I, doing really well. I, yep. I really am happy with uh, Zoe so far. And I think I uh, think that's a good time to get on to the next segment. Let's do it. All right. Wait, that's my job. This is the manga recap for chapter 838, Chobro. Why don't we get into You know it, Chobro. <laughs> what's going on in the front page here? Because there's some stuff we need to talk about here. Like, really. So this is the Dex of the World 500 Million Man arc, final volume. A wedding at a certain ruined island, but f*** that. Rockstar's back, guys. Our boy lives. <laughs> I cannot believe after, it. After 604 long chapters. Oh, those are the numbers you're looking for. <laughs> many, many years he has returned to us. So. Rockstar is, in fact, a character in One Piece. He was not a mistake. It was not. <laughs> now, what I got to look for is when we named that episode after him, <laughs> how long ago that was. Everyone forgets about no, Rockstar. We should, I mean, we should already be calling this episode Rockstar is in this podcast. Oh, yeah. The, it was episode. <laughs> let me give you an idea. It was episode 88 of the One Piece podcast. It was called Rockstar Jeez. is not in this podcast. Um, but here he is, and he is in this podcast. That was it eight, might actually the... It was First my birthday can... in 2010. I'll put it that way. <laughs> he's been out for so long that he's reinvented himself. Now he's indie star. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, whose wedding do we think this is? He got back to his roots. Do you think uh, this is Shanks and Shank... um, Makino? Makino? Makino. No. Yeah, that's what I thought. I <laughs> thought it was Shanks and Makino. Yeah, that's what I thought. Clearly, was... it's Mihawk's wedding because there is a cross on that church. <laughs> oh. oh, he <laughs> married oh, Corona. Hey, I mean, like, it seems like Mihawk is one of uh, Shanks' best friends who isn't on his crew. It seems but, that true. Guys, there's there's a there's a major red hair pirate that we have not seen, and that's Lucky Roo. Ah, ah Lucky Roo's getting married. Lucky Roo's wedding. He's next week. <laughs> lucky Roo got lucky. <laughs> He's yeah. next week. That's the, awesome. That's the final Roo. volume. Yeah, the <laughs> final, final volume. We're going to get some... Uh, I didn't see that. It said final volume. R- Ruby, Random Ruby, straw Ruby. hats and uh, animals now. I'm hoping that it's an actual like story because I mean, like as much as I liked seeing these characters again, I do kind of miss what we got with Jim Bay, which is like where we got the you know the Poneglyph and we got all this backstory information, and oh, now Jim Bay's back happens. in the story. <laughs> yeah, like something where actually something happens in the cover story. That's what I want now. Mm-hmm. The, something I I'd say something major happened in this. Rockstar was confirmed. <laughs> yeah, this, but this was like, look, like and look at Shanks's pants. 
Oh yes, <laughs> those are brother. those are his wedding pants, Sam. Those are his, <laughs> yeah, those are his nice pants. Those his are his pants formal are pants. pants he wears for parties. <laughs> <laughs> Shanks's wedding pants. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to some substance in the cover stories, but keep in mind, and we always forget this. Even when there is substance in the cover story, there's not much of it. <laughs> it's it's pretty. I, yeah, more Enaru. Wow. <laughs> I don't. Th- I don't think this is Machino or anything like that. Because I would love how it's. If, if that'd be hilarious if it was Shanks and Machino's wedding, and it's like, oh, let's cut the cake. Hold on, a newspaper came in. <laughs> it's outside and read it. Uh, you could you could yeah. cut the cake yourself, right, hun? Um, yeah, it looks like th- they're celebrating in the background. Facing away from everyone, that one this guy. This has got to be somewhere on the Grand Line because I would take a guess that this is a summer island because it looks like a desert with all the cacti. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, some I people was, because of. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was a couple of weeks ago. I was picking at the wording of a certain island, but now now that they've done it three times in a row, I just I don't think there's really no. A but it's a certain, a certain ruined, ruined island. island. Yeah, yes. that's what I was hmm, going to true. Out. It's because uh, a lot of people were guessing maybe Baltigo, Baltigo but that yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Why would there be a wedding there? No, yeah. I, don't, I don't think hey, Baltigo makes sense. T- hey, Baltigo got destroyed. That means it's totally open for booking weddings. And yeah. Stuff. yeah. No <laughs> confliction. I Maybe mean, Lucky Rue married Katerina Devon. <laughs> Finally. Um, it's, it's the uh, match we've been trying to make this whole podcast. I, I very black the noses it was meant to be. Ruined doesn't need to mean it's recently ruined. I think it could have meant right. it could have been ruined at any point prior in the series, Shit. but it also could have been ruined. I mean, this island really went downhill when all the hipsters started moving in. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, what's the name of uh, what's the name of Mihawk's like abandoned ruined castle island? Uh, oh, Mo- Transylvania. So it was the okay. Muggy Kingdom on Muggy, whatever yeah. the Muggy Gloomy Kingdom. Island, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's the cover page. Uh, I mean, it's that's pretty. It's, it's the a pretty longest we've talked about a cover page in, in a while. Quite a while. Rockstar yeah. guys, yeah, rock Rockstar, six hundred and four chapters. For those who don't remember, you could listen to episode eighty-eight of the One Piece podcast <laughs> when we were all little kids talking about One Piece. Um, uh, One Piece podcast kids coming in twenty twenty-four. Apparently, anyway. with thick New York accents. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ed, why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. very convincing, Zach. Oh, uh, man. The, the forest is stunned into silence. Cracker is... Like, he's, like, grumbling on the ground there. Um, but... Boing! So, um, Luffy declares he's going to see Sanji. He has very intense eyes. He blasts off towards Cracker. He's announcing his attack. He goes, Gum Gum! Kong Gun! But not before the homies warn Master Cracker and he gets up for his pretzel roll. Um, and and stop the him. fist is going straight against the sword as the page ends. It's a good action page. I, I, I just want to say the, I have Cracker's pose here. Yeah, the um, my well, I think both pages, mainly the first page, I really like this page. I think it's because it's only four panels. It just there's room to breathe, and also I think it's drawn very well. I think uh, Cracker looks great, and uh, Luffy's pose and close up, and of course like the white shot, it's drawn very well. I don't know, it, there's something mm. about this page, and I think it's because there's only four panels, and felt like there was some time put into these drawings. Uh, it looks great, and there's, yeah. there's there's also no like conflicting elements because each one is just one guy. So there's yeah. not like the crazy clashing and yeah. speed lines everywhere. All the homies have great facial expressions. I mean, mm-hmm. any any page with the homies is is a good page. Well, uh, the then the next couple of pages read very clearly as well. Uh, well, let's get into that, Steve. Yeah, because on the next that was my, page, that was my segue. Thank you, Smooth. Steve. You're you're fantastic at this. <laughs> I forgot how great you were at seg- segways. Uh, so we go to the next page. And if you thought things were just going to be a completely normal fight and this was going to be over like we probably did last week, uh, you're wrong. Uh, Because Luffy's fist goes straight through Cracker's body. And that was it. He he died. It was over. We're done. Um, Good run. Yep. It was was good. Um, And Hero never dies. Master Cracker splits in half and everyone is shocked. Uh, Except it looks like Cracker is smiling while... Looks like blood or syrup or something's coming out of his mouth. Anyway, uh, a hand whacks the side of the bottom of his torso, 
and Luffy notices a very odd-looking half-bunny silhouette erupts out of the uh, torso and brings a sword and a cape, and he flops and he cuts Luffy's arm, and that's the end of Luffy's arm, guys. That um, looks like it hurts. That looks like it should be painful and debilitating. But uh, For whatever reason, the way, the way you said that made it sound almost like a nursery rhyme. You're like, he flops and he struts and he cuts his arm down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss my true calling, Roger. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Could have been the next Dr. Seuss. And he bachinged his hand back into place. Um, <laughs> now you're just chastening. I'm sorry. Um, and he fall and Luffy, uh, well, he does boing back. He guangs back or whatever he does. Um, <laughs> boing, and, boing, boing. It's that, yeah, it's like that um, met- metallic kind of sounding boing. Um, and he's like, what, what, who are you? And an ellipses forms around the top of his body. As we find out on the next page, who is this Steve? Well, obviously, we get a full body reveal of some character from Final Fantasy X. Uh, <laughs> big scar on his face, really creepy eyes and smile as he laughs. <laughs> I'm impressed that you managed to break my armor. It's, uh, oh, it's man. Not I thought you were going to give him a Waka voice. You said Final Fantasy X, and I was expecting you to be like, oh, I don't know anything about armor, Final yeah? Fantasy X other than that it's called Final Fantasy X. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Stupid hair. Steve, even yeah. I've played Final Fantasy X. Well, Zach, you didn't have a childhood, so don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Is that have anything? Okay, go. Um, Zach was born at the age of 40. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Luffy is holding his arm as it blub blubs, uh, I guess from the throbbing pain, and Cracker goes, says, Who am I, you ask? I'm pretty sure I already introduced myself. I'm Cracker, the general, as the homies uh, laugh. Um, it's a real shame. I like that armor. And Luffy's like, Armor? You're lying. You're bleeding. Uh, no, that was jam. <laughs> <laughs> raspberry jam. It's raspberry jam. <laughs> Only one man would dare give me the raspberry. Um, that is, it's like, I'm a biscuit man with the powers of the bis-bis fruit. Yep, look at me. I can produce and manipulate an infinite number of biscuits. I just craft the outline with crushed biscuit dust. Just set your mind to it. And the face and harden, it becomes a hardened warrior. <laughs> you sound like a southern chef describing how he makes his biscuits. Now, biscuits change their form, Zach, depending on the error and the creator. This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I was going to say, I actually, now that I you got further out? into it, go ahead. This is, this, is, this is absurd. And this is one piece. <laughs> I love this. My my first thought was like this is very uh, DBZ, where like the true form is like smaller and leaner. Yeah. He's still pretty big, which yeah. is still not a, like an Oda thing. Um, yeah, it's not an Oda I'm thing. Pretty, I think I, I think Greg has said this on the podcast. Yeah, Greg has he, talked about that. You know, how like you know uh, Toriyama was all about you know the upgrades being sleeker, like how like I think everything is with like technology, but Oda's more about no bigger, more muscly, better. Um, we were talking about that before Gear 4 came out, and Greg, as mm-hmm. you could tell, was correct that it was bigger. Um, yeah. And, you know, even Apple's going in the direction of making them bigger, so it's things but change. Apples. No, not actual <laughs> apples, the company Apple. They're making smaller apples. <laughs> well, because they could only they could only make phones so small, and then they got to find a way to resell the phones. So they're like, oh, we're going to make them bigger now. Oh, and then right. five years later, it's like, oh, well, look, smallest iPhone ever. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, I, I I gotta admit, I don't, I don't know if I, I maybe I should save this till later at the end of the chapter, but I, I was reading this and I thought you, you've got to be kidding me, right? Yeah. I mean, I felt you, the exact same way. I don't think you're. Alone. Uh, it's how, how convenient. I don't. I I don't want to get too into it right now. It will knock us off the rails. But I have much to say. But I, I'll say this one thing: Oda must I have hair on fire. Well, there's that. Oh, I'm glad you pointed that out. If mm-hmm. you notice, he has three little hair things, two on the side that look like fuses with fire lit on them because he's a firecracker. Hey. Oh. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice that. Wow. So this is a I noticed, cracker. I noticed English. the wicks. I just couldn't understand what they were. The English cracker. Now it mm-hmm. makes sense. He's still stupid. <laughs> Wait, so based on. 
based on this like bottom left panel where he's sort of like rising the biscuits from the ground, do you guys think this is like an awakened power, kind of like Dofi's? <laughs> you know what? It might as well be. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you can't just like make like this isn't this is something improbable. that a paramecia could do. Yeah, yeah. Well, he can produce and manipulate an infinite number of uh, biscuits. Yeah, apparently he must have freaking. Well, I don't know if he's a Logia or paramecia. Um, because I just, I'm thinking Spider-Man 3 Sandman, just cracker crumbs <laughs> become a person. Uh, and a, yeah, this is... Thank you, Steve. Uh, Roger, would you like to go to the next page? Yeah, I'm actually going to continue on with Steve's awesome Cracker Barrel uh, Cracker impression. That's how I think, that's the voice I'm going to do, so I'm going to do this again for Cracker. Crack, the Cracker Barrel. The cracker awesome Barrel Cracker, yeah. for affordable price. Not Sound many better. managed to catch a glimpse of my true self. In fact, the bounty poster printed by the government only shows my armor and not me. You see, I don't like pain, not even injections, which I actually think is important that he mentions he doesn't like pain. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get into that at the oh, end God. of the chapter. But then, oh, I didn't know Captain Kuro was going to come back. No, it's, <laughs> it's Pearl 2.0. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> Captain <laughs> Pearl's baby. But uh, we basically see this awesome panel then of Cracker summoning hundreds of these crazy cracker armor biscuit warriors and he says i surround myself with armor manipulate it and fight with it strike it and it will grow this is my dream biscuit therefore my fighting power might as well be limitless that thing you tried so hard to destroy was nothing but a single biscuit warrior of which i could make an infinite number and Luffy is obviously shocked at this. He's as <laughs> blown back by this as all the rest of us were when we saw his power for the first time. And then Cracker continues on. Now, do you see why you will never meet with Vin Smoke Sanji ever again? And then Sanji, we get a little quick flashback of him saying, I'll be back. And Luffy is obviously not taking too kindly to that suggestion that he will never see Sanji again. And he freaks out by saying, no, I will. Wow, Luffy's, Luffy's yeah, voice huh. dropped. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. My nuh -uh, yeah, huh, nuh -uh, yeah. My headphones just dropped out. <laughs> uh, Sam, uh, can you continue <laughs> this impression? <laughs> I cannot continue the impression, but I can do something. Uh, <clears throat> learning that there are people out there with uh, what for which that? There no amount of effort can overcome. What the hell is that? <laughs> what kind of impression is that? what we call is true that? growth, stupid boy. And then uh, Luffy is uh, doing his sort of, uh, what do they call that in Dragon Ball, when like <laughs> Goku's like waving his hands really fast. Oh. Uh, he's doing his Gum Gum Kong organ gun, which is basically the uh, the Gear 4 equivalent of the Gum Gum Gatling. Uh, he's just, uh, just barraging really fast against uh, all these different cracker, uh, what are we calling them? Doubles? Uh, Armor? Armors. Shadow yeah. Clubs? Shadow clones. Shadow clones. Shadow clones. <laughs> Basically, there's a bunch of crackers and Luffy's punching them all at once. And it's this big uh, two-page action spread and crackers' shields are you know, getting shattered by each of these punches. But then regrow. Um, th this, yeah. this is just such a badass spread, I have to say. I was like <laughs> super blown away. Because the thing with Doflamingo is like, oh, we saw all of the cool Gear 4 stuff. And it's like, wait, I guess there would be an equivalent for all his normal ones in Gear 4 and... and this looks really cool. Um, and here, should, and here, Luffy is curtain jerking this arc with all his awesome attacks right away. Yeah. I should point out here that um, the uh, the organ gun, you know, like a lot of of Luffy's uh, recent attacks, where he uses kind of like old fashioned cannon names. Uh, the organ gun is a type. I, I, I guess you wouldn't call it artillery. It's more like a a, a more close range gun, but it's like a sort of. Um, a mounted gun from the early earlier days of uh, you know gun gunpowder based warfare, um, where they would have a bunch of barrels like lined up in a row, and it was called an organ gun because it looked like pipe organs because um, you had all these barrels and oh, then they yeah. would just fire them off in rapid succession. So that's what his little um, you know his, his little mounting thing is here with all of his fists. Uh, doing that. I think they have, if you ever play Risk, I think one of the, the canon piece looks kind of like that. Or you could mm -hmm. just Google Organ Gun and, and you'll see. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, okay, so S Stephen, you're, you're next. All right. Um, and we are seeing a bit of the aftermath here as uh, it... Cracker is uh, commanding his troops forward, but you can see that Luffy's definitely having an effect because it looks like there's like shards and you know bits of rubble breaking off of the uh, the Cracker shields, 
and um, you know there's a lot of intensity here. And uh, Cracker uses a move that he calls honey pretzel, uh, which in, originally in Japanese, like the honey, it, it does this weird thing where he used kanji for like a surge or something like that. But it, it was like hado or something like that. And he just used the ha sound to go honey, honey pretzel. And uh, he swoops forward, it just lunges and Luffy just barely uh, tucks his head down to avoid the blow and uh, we we're going to transition out of the scene, but clearly the, uh, the battle is still pitched between these two. Um, and uh, nearby in the forest, uh, the, the homies are in full retreat. There's just, there's too much power here. They're too overwhelmed by master cracker and straw hat to, to be around here. And uh, Nami's like, so I don't care. And, for some reason, they are shocked that she doesn't care about them. They're like, what? What? Um, she says, hundreds of you could shrivel up and wither away, and I would not care at all. And you can see she is, like, triumphantly standing inside the mouth of King Baum. She does not seem very safe. Um, and uh, <laughs> Pound, Your Pound, face. Is, <clears throat> Pound is just sitting um, on the uh, side of the tree next to her. And uh, so she she asks... <laughs> Crack of the general or his mother, Big Mom, which one's scarier as she holds out the, uh, the fever card <laughs> and they say, I you love are. that face. I love that face. That's yeah, great. she's uh, she is living it up right now. She's <laughs> not me doing what she does best. Uh, intimidation. <clears throat> and uh, now we uh, transition again to a place that we have not actually seen yet. It is Brulee's mirror world and it. Looks like we got a little, like, um, you know, gingerbread house in the woods sort of thing. Black cat on top of it. Yeah, black cat on top of it, a little water wheel. Um, and uh, Chopper is talking with Carrot. Um, he's, he's telling her, listen up, I've got a great idea. So uh, now you may call me. He's, he's asserting his influence here. You, you can call me Big Bro Chopper. And she's like, okay, so what's the idea, Chobro? And he's like, what? <laughs> Chobro. Cho- by the Chow way, bro. thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen, for going with Chobro instead of the Scanlation choice, which was proper, which was absolutely horrendous. Uh, so, uh, Ooh, the, yeah. The proper, proper. yeah. That sounds like a yeah. sound effect. Chobro is far better. <laughs> Hello, baby. Okay. Big proper over here. Yeah, big proper. <laughs> uh, Steve. Uh, well, it seems like in the world within the mirror is actually connected to all the mirrors on Whole Cake Island. And uh, uh, freaking out, man. Yeah, and Carrot's like, I think you're right, bruh. <laughs> uh, some uh, a cool little panel here to see in uh, this windy staircase. Uh, I don't know if you could say this is like an Escher. It's kind of it's almost more of uh, Dolly. Oh uh, yeah, Dolly. Uh, a little bit a little of bit uh, Alice in Wonderland too, I think. Yeah. And, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, you notice the ball and chain on their legs? Uh, the name, uh, name of the artist escapes, but he always does the crazy kind of paintings. Uh, everything all intertwines and stuff. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, Chopper says, we shouldn't be trying to escape this place. We should be using Brule's powers to our benefit. And How are they going to move with those big balls on their legs? Yeah, I noticed that they got the big ball and chain. Uh, They're not I- even married. <laughs> get out of here Ed <laughs> now I'm curious is this also Brule's power or do we have someone called um, Master Ball and Chain on this island who <laughs> ate the Ball and Chain fruit who can produce as many Ball and Chains as they yeah. want to mm, he's got the including like the body doubles pretty sure that was a Zelda mini boss at some point <laughs> and we go back to the capital of Whole Cake Island Sweet City and wait we you're saying spring. the capital of Whole Cake Island is Sweet City Never would have guessed. Please continue, oh. Steve. <laughs> I thought I said something wrong, and then you said the exact same thing I did. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I said because <laughs> it's in the manga. I didn't write it. I'm just reading what, what's okay, in the okay, manga. Okay, okay, Steve. <laughs> uh, and we hear some whispering. Uh, it's like, Pedro, Pedro. <laughs> and, and Brooke says, it looks like we've successfully gotten inside. And Pedro says, yes, at this point, our infiltration is practically a success. This thing moves through Big Mom's powers. After the biscuit soldier does its rounds, it goes back into storage at the castle. 
we'll just wait until then to pop out. And I guess this is um, apparently a biscuit soldier, probably made by Cracker, but then given life through Big Mom. Uh, and he's hollow inside. So he's a Trojan biscuit. <laughs> I was going to say, plenty of space to store all that raspberry jam to, yeah. to, 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 you know, because, oh, I better let him know I'm bleeding, Blech, you know, <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and then we, next morning, um, like this whole time, I guess, is, has this been taking place at night? Yeah. 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 Under okay. the gibbous moon. Come on, Steve. Well, what? <laughs> uh, the, the, oh, all right so you know after the night <laughs> moon, we um it's the next morning and we're at the whole cake uh chateau and we hear something good morning today's schedule is a meeting with the vinsmoke family at the castle followed by the exchange of gifts mama and mom says is the wedding cake uh, ready yet and this this thing talking says that will be tomorrow um, Big Mom says, so it's been a night now. What are those mold spores up to? Very that's, interesting. that's an interesting yeah. term. Well, you know, from her perspective, it's like sweets. What's the, the natural enemy of sweets? It's going bad. Uh, dentistry. I suppose. <laughs> Tooth decay. Okay. <laughs> it's like this is their final chance to make contact with their pal. And someone's like, like why? How, cru- why? How cruel of you, Mama? Um, you know you sent Master Cracker after them. Once Blackleg enters the castle, and this is Big Mom again. Oh, no, this is still whatever's talking. And it is her hat. Um, their chances of con- contact are essentially... It is her zero. hat. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> no flash pictures. <laughs> um. After all, the tea party and the wedding ceremony will be held here within the castle. Mama just says, so they're all talk, huh? Just like the others, I guess the other uh, worst generation members. It almost sounds like mm. she wants the Straw Hats to succeed. I think like, yeah. 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 it's for her own entertainment. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, she says, you know, she this is their final chance. Are they all talk like the others And her face? Like almost looks like she'd be disappointed if they were. Yeah, I think she's kind of like in a Saitama situation where, you know, he's so powerful that he hasn't really had anybody to, like, come in contact with him or, like, actually give him a real fight. And I feel like as a Yonko, she doesn't really go against somebody who's really going to try to challenge her in any meaningful way. So she probably wants, yeah, Luffy to succeed and the rest of them to succeed so she could take him out herself. Either that or it's just some kind of clumsy exposition because there is kind yeah. of a lot of that in this chapter. Mm. <laughs> like with Brick and Pedro. Mm-hmm. Reminding each other of what they're doing at this exact moment. <laughs> now remember, this thing yes. only exists because Big Mom's powers, and eventually he has to rest. <laughs> Don't worry, the anime will cover all this. Oh, yes. <laughs> In painstaking detail. Um, mom's, I think this is uh, yeah. Big Mom saying, we got to have all the Vin Smoke sons together anyway. And we go back to Germa, and the hat says, oh, actually, we just received word that they planted in the port. Roger. Oh boy. And we cut to uh, Judge, Vince Smoke Judge, and he says, At last, my beloved sons are here. And we Except see for that son that I don't care about. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> <here>. <laughs> but um, so we see Reiju and Yonji both sort of like um, reacting to that. And Yonji says, This should be good. Can't wait to see them face off with Sanji. And we get this really cool little mini shot of the castle, then a zoom in on Sanji, who is shivering, and you see like the ashes falling off his cigarette. And then finally, for the first time, we get their true names, Vince Smoke Ichiji and Vince Smoke Niji, the first and second son of the Vince Smoke family. And uh, everyone's saying, congrats on your long journey. You know, I can't help but notice that he ain't here to greet us is what Niji brings up. So I'm assuming he's talking about Sanji at that moment. Um, and Ichiji tells him to sort of give it a rest. And everybody else is just sort of talking about how they can't believe that they wrap up the war on Broccoli Island. And everybody seems to really love them, which is not a surprise considering sort of like the family aspect of Germa. But yeah, the second son of the Vinsmokes, Electric Blue Vinsmoke Niji, and the eldest son of Vince of the Vinsmokes, Sparking Red Vinsmoke Ichiji. And then we find out that One Piece will be off next week. So the, sen- the Sentai Warriors are here. True villains. <laughs> They'll be back. <laughs> They'll be back in two weeks. Um, as true villains often are. Um, 
Yeah, it's, we'll, we'll go uh, one at a time. We'll talk more about uh, the Sentai Warriors uh, when, when, when we discuss it. So, uh, Roger, first, I'll ask you, what are your thoughts yeah. on this chapter? Uh, I really enjoyed it. I, rarely do I ever give fives in my manga reviews, but I gave this one a five just because it was so much fun to read. And not necessarily just because of the content that was in it, but I will say that I think even content-wise, it gave us a lot of really good information. One, it gave us a sense of time. We now know that it's the next morning. Um, so I don't know if like Luffy and Cracker were just fighting all through the night or what's going on there, but I'm hoping that some sometime soon we're going to get a wrap-up of that. Uh, two, I think Cracker is an awesome character now. I hated him, and I thought he was just going to get one-shotted last week. And so the fact that he wasn't, I'm so glad I was wrong about it. He seems like a really cool character. Uh, he's living up to the name of the Yonko Commanders. And, of course, seeing the uh, long-held theory about Ichiji and Niji being the brothers' names, which I think everybody basically had at this point. Well, uh, I think we were, hoping, kind of nice. we were hoping Wanji. it would be Wanji. <laughs> that was, Wanji, yeah, yeah, I, I was one, disappointed Wanji, right? about that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh yeah I, mean, I just i thoroughly enjoyed this chapter i think it had a good mix of everything action comedy the stuff with like brother chopper and um with nami of course with the vibra card and the whole thing with the mirror world too was also really interesting to me because the way that that was sort of set up to me i feel like chopper is going to be the first one to actually get to sanji i feel like chopper and carrot are going to like find a mirror within the castle or something and be like yeah. sanji Listen, we're safe. You got to get out of here. We can't come to you right now. We're stuck in this mirror world, but you got to do something. And then maybe that'll give Sanji the, uh, I don't know, the boost of confidence he needs to finally take down his brothers once and for all. Because clearly he's shaken at the end of this chapter. I mean, he's shivering. His cigarette is sort of like, you know, the ashes dropping off of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm curious as to what's going to happen there. I, I really enjoyed it. It's like this is how uh, um, the like the haunted mirror is that from Snow White like the the magic mirror that's how that's how those things are created right it's gonna be chopper and carrot in the mirror I mean I'll, yeah exactly I'll, yeah I'll say it's I think it's more likely that they show up to pudding since she's in Big Mom's realm mm. at least because the, the rest oh of these I guys, like that the rest of these guys are still in uh in Germa uh, which is yes right next to Whole Cake Island at the moment but it's technically you know in, in a different place. Um, and also, we're, I'm kind of curious what the hell's happening with Pudding and, and how uh, sincere is she? Anyway, uh, Stephen, what, what were your thoughts? Um, I liked... I liked this chapter visually a lot. Um, uh, like like Roger said, uh, I really, I much, much prefer the new design of Cracker. Like, I really did not buy the, the kind of bearded weirdo um, uh, look that he had earlier. This guy it has a, a much more interesting design, um, and uh, I buy it a lot more, basically. Um, I lo- you know the the fight the fight scene was was cool stuff and um, you know while I'm not necessarily that invested personally in, in you know the the fighting with the uh, sub villains you know it's a necessary part of the arc so um, you know at least it's um, something that is um, you know you know kind of um, proving its value in other ways which is like lots of cool um, fighting scenes the uh, the mirror world I love the look of it. I, I have been, I will admit, I've been a little annoyed at, like, how how br- briefly Oda has been talking about it. I feel like there's been a lot of awkward transitions with it, because um, there was, like, the, you know, the scene in a, in a previous chapter where the mirror breaks, and then you see Chopper's eye um, point at He's like, look down here! And then that's literally the end of the scene. Um, and so it, it's been very abbreviated in certain ways, which has been... Um, I kind of left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, but I like where I think he's heading with it. Um, so, uh, that is cool. And, um, I think the one, the one thing that I I was, um, thinking about as we got to the last uh, part with the brothers is that I feel like, I kind of feel like there has to be more, a more detailed, um, backstory thing here between science. Cause we've seen, we saw in the one little flashback about how, you know, they would kind of pick on him and um you know make fun of his cooking habits and stuff but like we've seen many scenes now of sanji like reacting with like you know great tension and anxiety over this um this eventual meeting is i, I kind of feel like there has to be something more to explain this i mean I, I i realize yeah you know childhood trauma goes deep and you know is not necessarily like a, a rational thing but 
you know, just like, oh, they they picked on me when I was a little kid causing this kind of thing in, you know, Sanji, uh, who is normally a very self-assured and um, confident character. Uh, you know, I feel like there has to be something more to that to, to for me to buy it, I guess, um, as, as a character thing. Well put. Well That's put, my thoughts. Stephen. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, Steve. <laughs> Um, well, first of all, it's nice to be back for, uh, a manga recap. Uh, and, uh, this is a pretty good chapter. Um, a lot I want to talk about, uh, first of all, uh, Cracker, uh, his ability, the bis bis fruit, I find to be absolutely ridiculous. (laughs) Uh, like to the, to the point of improbable. I mean, I actually wound up at talking with Alex as well about this. And I think he kind of said some things that kind of, I'm like, improbable. okay. All right. It's just, improbable in a world full of magic powers. I know. I, I That's the thing. I shouldn't be saying this because it's one piece. Everyone has ridiculous powers. But this one just seemed like, I don't know how, you know, if this sounds a little harsh, but I feel like Oda kind of pulled this out of his ass. <laughs> is it the uh, the infinite thing where you can just? It's just like oh, is that? Let me just clap my hands and biscuits everywhere, and I'm like, that's what the, the, the. maybe it's a logia. <laughs> oh God, well, logia be... logia means it's from your own body, <laughs> like your own body. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't look like that. Like that's why I was mentioning earlier that it's probably an awakening because it's like he's growing them from the ground. It almost yeah. looked like like he was crumbling them up and then they were rising. From no, the ground. not even. So. No, they just pop is because there's like the panel where he's talking about it. They kind of there's. Oh yeah, the set. Yeah, yeah. They, Although, couldn't it be possible they, that the entire island is like made out of biscuit because it's Big Mom? Mm. It's, it's mm-hmm. if it's just like if freaking Kuzan just clapped his hands and be like, "Snow cones for everybody," you know? It's just <laughs> it's weird. Um. And it's like what what a coincidence that the guy named Cracker just so happened to eat a a fruit that turns everybody into like you know, well that's just, that's one piece just right there makes biscuits. Yeah. Uh, I I honestly think the whole like like that might be like, a nickname, Steve. I mean, he might like have had a, a birth name that was different. I don't know. What's his is, name? Charlotte Cracker. When we when we first got introduced with the Oda Bucks. Uh, um. I don't think he did because he had the epithet because it was Thousand Arm Cracker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, it says right here. I, uh, it is. It's Charlotte Cracker. His initial. Okay, all right. I looked on One Piece Wiki. Yeah, it was Charlotte Cracker. Okay. Weird. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it, I, I feel like this might have just been like a change he came up with recently because you're telling me, like, Otis is like, yeah, I'm just drawing this guy getting beat. And, uh, oh, this is blood, but it's really jam. It's going to be an amazing twist. I just, I feel like he wrote that line in there to cover his ass. Because he probably maybe forgot, like, oh crap, I drew blood. Um, I don't know. We'll never know. I and I'm not sure which design I like more. I kind of was really uh, warming up to the character design that we uh, knew, but like Alex, like said, like, eh, this is kind of like a like he was kind of like a typical looking One Piece character. This is something a little different. Yeah, I have to admit, yeah, yeah kind of is. Uh, you know, this is this is a character I haven't really you know seen before. Uh, and he doesn't just look like Zoro or Sanji or Law. He's much more expressive, kind of like if Bellamy like went to a psych ward. Um, this is how he looks. <laughs> Which I don't he should have. <laughs> I, I, I just I, I find this power to be so incredibly stupid. But I think I'm just maybe I'm just taking it a little too well, seriously. Well, let me ask you. I mean, as as a villain in Dragon Ball, uh, what did you think of Boo in general? I, well, Boo, Boo was refreshing because uh, as much as I like Frieza and Cell, it was kind of just like the same shit. You know, it's just Key Blast and I'm super strong. Boo was like, it was like a throwback to the days of the original Dragon Ball content. I mean, that, ridiculous that, character. That, that's who this reminds me of, not visually uh, necessarily, but in just the crazy powers coming out of nowhere kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, especially Maybe this is... Maybe this is also. I'm sorry, Zach. You should continue. No, no, that's that's all I have. Um, maybe this is kind of what we should expect now from New World characters. Is yeah, I have this power that seems ridiculous, but you know, I'm so super strong that I've awakened this ability and turned it into something that no one ever thought of. I guess you could say that with Doflamingo. I don't like. What do you guys think is more ridiculous? 
cracker clones, you know, biscuit clones or string clones? Oh, I mean, str- definitely cracker clones. Because at least with string clones, there was like the whole puppet aspect to it. With yeah. this, it's like, no, what no. the heck? Just crackers erupting from the ground. How do you how do you make clones out of string? I mean, crackers are actually pretty. Malleable. Well, you could like you no, could... but you could weave. I mean, you could like weave things and weave to create like characters and I'll, like. I'll I mean, say... they sell like. Sorry, I'll, I'll say this. It makes sense for neither of them to be talking. Um, like, I don't <laughs> yeah. Get yeah, that's that. true. That's um, true. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, like, yeah, it's it's a fully animated uh, shell, like armor that could express, you know, human emotions. It's, yeah. I mean, it's a cartoon. We have to throw rules out the window. But this is the kind of one that was like, is this a rewrite? This feels like a rewrite. Um, I do. I do think something you mentioned, though, Steve, is really important to point out, which is like that from here on out, everyone's going to have crazy powers, though, because yeah. I mean, really, it's weird the way Cracker's being set up, because we just recently had a Yonko commander as the main antagonist in arc. We had Jack, right, for Zoe. And Jack, when when we were seeing the flashback and he was doing all this crazy stuff, we didn't think anything of it because he was the main antagonist of the arc. We thought, oh, of course, he's like the final antagonist of this arc. Whereas here we have an end game, like Big Mom or the Vince Smokes, that's who we're getting to. So it sort of feels like this fight should have been wrapped up really quickly, but then when you take it out of context of the story, it's like, he is a Yonko commander. He's on the level of somebody like Jack, so he better be just as strong. If not, like, it wouldn't really make sense for Luffy to just go in and one-shot him. Yeah. And also, well, we're getting we're getting towards, you know, the la- latter half of One Piece. Uh, we've used up a lot of powers already. Getting toward the latter half? Anyway, Sam. <laughs> what were your thoughts? Uh, so, well, I, 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 hold on. I, I, I only really got to talk about Cracker. <laughs> <laughs> cracker, please. Um, I don't, well, I, That's uh, racist. Hey, don't say that. That triggers me. That's racist. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. Other than that, I thought the the artwork was really good. Um, I, I I like it when Oda gives himself room to breathe. Even the the first couple of pages I did the the cracker reveal, I think some like some of these panels are really good, especially the last one where he's uh, clapping his hands and summoning all this armor. I think that's a really clear looking panel. Um, very expressive. I think yeah, I think the artwork was pretty great. Even uh, the the organ gun, I, I, you know, I thought was some good stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's uh, it's cool to see uh, more of the Vin Smokes. I really, uh, I, I really want to see more of this now. I think we've been in the, the woods for so long now. I'm like, okay, all right, give me some more of the Vin Smoke stuff. I, I think um, I think Otis come a long way since his Squiggle Vision days in Dress Rosa. Um, I yeah, think, I, I, yeah, picking up uh, Volume seventy nine, looking through, and I'm like, ah, oh, this artwork just seems really rushed like this looks like deadline artwork um i think you know some of this stuff lately has been a little bit more paced but this is just otis style at this point now he likes using a nib despite his uh his art being very um very very round at times i'm amazed he uses a nib but uh it's it it, it looks a little bit cleaner lately but uh yeah i who knows what's gonna happen next chapter so I thought this chapter was great. Uh, I love Cracker's new design. I think that uh, I think this is a great way to sort of really sell Cracker as a, a you know a, a, what do you call him <laughs> an agent of of one of the emperors, right? Like he's supposed to be among the strongest characters in the series at this point. Um, and just like it's it's bringing us back to these situations where. Uh, I am like wondering, like, how is Luffy going to win this fight? Let alone all the fights coming up, which is a thing that I want to see more of in One Piece in general. Uh, I also love the mirror world idea. Like, I I, wa- I really want to see some like cool like plot twisting hijinks with uh, transporting between different places through the mirrors. Uh, and I think that the uh, the Ichiji and Niji stuff is is pretty cool. Well, most importantly, Rockstar is back, guys. <laughs> in this, <laughs> we podcast. already discussed that. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> really love that, um, but yeah, uh, Luffy versus Cracker was a uh, was a, a, a tremendous fight. Um, I'm really curious as to where it goes from here because Cracker seems to have this. Uh, although it's Luffy, so it's probably just going to go with um, overwhelming force. Although we've tried that, and uh, we'll have to see what Luffy has to pop out of his bag to to, to defeat this guy. Um, but yeah, like especially the organ gun uh, double spread that was. Uh, that was really it was really really well done. Um, Brule and Chopper are very cute together. So I'm glad that they're together for this arc, uh, at least for this part of it. 
Nami. Do you ship them? Do you ship them? <laughs> Brulee and ship- Chopper, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, carrot and chopper. Right? No, they, uh, they, they seem like siblings. I mean, even that yeah, line, yeah. big bro chopper. Like, Why they're bros? Yeah, chopper <laughs> has <laughs> someone to ship with already, and that's that reindeer. And we already mm-hmm. saw. Her name is Tristan. No, that's uh, Milky. No, Tristan's a squirrel. Yeah. All right. Okay. Milky um, was her name. Yep. That's a weird name for a reindeer. Milky. <laughs> uh, anyway. How much milk do reindeers produce? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she had pretty. I was gonna say she had pretty big boobs, if I remember correctly. You know. <laughs> Look, they're all mammals. They all produce milk. Let's move on, Ed. <laughs> anything else? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a mammal, Zach. Could you milk me? <laughs> <laughs> Not answering that. Not answering that. <laughs> anything else? Ed? Uh, I'm just doing lines from the parents at this point. But, um, <laughs> I love the design of the interior mirror world. That's really, really fun. Um, but yeah, just curious. What color do you think Sanji is of the Power Ranger squad? He's got black. yellow now, right? Or black? Could be black. I right? thought he was black. Yeah, oh, I black leg. He's like yeah. the black sheep of the family. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I like, like, I like the black leg idea. Well, the the concept of black sheep does not exist in Japan. It's you know whatever you would uh, say uh, for that, it would be something else. So that the black sheep part, black part, it would be um, English uh, based. But but yeah, the black leg does seem like a good. Oda has uh, used English-based puns and stuff before. It's not completely unreasonable. Um, I, I want to. Sure he was going to be blue because that's like his character color, but no, nah. we got uh, Niji's blue. Niji, yeah. I blue. definitely want to see a color spread with all of them in Sentai uh, gear. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, even if it's out of you know character, there, I just would like to see that. So, sort of like the uh, fruits straw hat. Um, yeah. One. Oh, yeah. the Battlefruits line? Yeah. But yeah, in their actual... decked out. Yeah, in their actual Vinsmoke uh, attire. Um, that's actually this month's uh, um, color spread for the calendar from that year. So it was up on my wall until earlier this morning. <laughs> what a what a day. Um, I just want to mention one thing uh, that I feel like we haven't... Uh, and that's that there's the passage of time between a pretty big fight that in a normal arc, I think would you know be expanded upon, and we'd have a lot of time spent on. Not that I'm complaining that we're moving on from it necessarily, but it's like a kind of up in the air thing. Um, and I was wondering if you guys had any thoughts as to what's happening in the passage of time here, cause from from day from night to day, mm. uh, with the fight between um, Cracker and Luffy. I, I will say, I hope he doesn't do, like, another Zoe style like, oh, okay, now it's the morning, and here, let's go to Flashback and tell you how Luffy, you know, all the twists and turns, because we, we've done a lo- enough of that recently, I think. And yet, you know, um, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I, I'm, I'm imagining it just, uh, that we, we just cut it to their fight in the next day, and they're still fighting, and they're just, like, panting. Well, do you think Could be, you know? I, yeah, go ahead. Roger? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that I, I like the idea somebody brought up where if we do see that and it cuts back to like a flashback and we see, um, even if we don't get like any information in the flashback, maybe we get a couple more punches, but then we just cut back to Cracker and Luffy and Cracker's laying there on the ground with like maybe a giant handprint or something and we don't know how Cracker was taken out. And then we eventually see that power in a later fight. That might mm. be a cool way. Mm. That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like the gear third thing with the door, except using yeah, right. it on a person. <laughs> right, right, yeah, cooler. basically. <laughs> yeah, um, that would be awesome. I like that idea, Roger. Um, I, also, I, I'm wondering if Nami is factoring in there and, and what Nami's plan is here. It seems like Oda's taking steps to show how the Straw Hats are going to be able to make it. Um, and that we have to kind of fill in those those blanks. Um, I think it's it's done in a little less of an anno- a way that would annoy Stephen, like what was happening at the beginning of the arc when you didn't know what was happening. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, Chobro and uh, Carrot have a plan here, and Nami has a plan with with the Vivre card. Um, and now I really like that idea with Roger, but I don't know. Now I'm going to be disappointed, Roger, if that doesn't happen. If hey, it's just th- <laughs> thank my subscribers, man. That's okay. like, it's all them. <laughs> uh, d- otherwise, I really, really enjoyed this chapter. I think the, I mean, personally, I've been more of a fan of the Vinsmoke plot. 
um, and the character designs in particular. So this introduction was really cool. I liked the way Oda laid out that that spread there. Um, I, I think it's just this really cool Sentai-ish kind of with the cape blowing in the breeze and like the curvature of the ground under them. I think it's just a really cool epic looking panel. Mm -hmm. Um, and also their ridiculous hairstyles. Um, we've got a uh, Troa burden and whatever the hell that is, um, going on. I guess that's a, a Troa in adulthood would have that kind of, uh, hairstyle, right? Steve, something like that. I don't know. Um, Listen to endless malts. More episodes coming back soon. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this. Do you guys want to get into the next segment? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Well, hey there, everybody. This is the Piece Together segment. We take your questions, comments, and theories. And first, we're going to read some emails. Take it away, Zach. Thank you, Cracker. Um... God, you know the funny like... thing about the funny thing about that is that if Cracker really spoke like that, his biscuits would be something very different. I indeed. was gonna say <laughs> biscuits and gravy for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I was literally gonna say I could really go for a biscuit right now, and then realizing it was the completely How about different. Gravy, I put gravy on everything. <laughs> um, okay. So th this one was sent to us last week, but I, I feel like we have more of a Rick and Morty crowd with us uh, than we did last week, so I'm going to ask it now. Uh, Eric asks, uh, if the Thousand Sunny was invested with intergalactic parasites as seen in episode 204, total Rick call, uh, wow, I feel like I'm reading a commentary, uh, <laughs> available now in stores near you, which memories... Uh, i.e. the bad ones, do you think the other Straw Hats will use in order to tell which ones of them are real? Um, my only stipulation is that recurring bad memories, such as anything Zoro versus Sanji related, is a no-go, as they all have to be unique. Uh, uh, maybe like when Luffy cooked for everybody? Right before they got to Whole Cake? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Recent, but very valid. I like that. Oh, wow. Uh... Bad memories. All those, um, all those frozen dead people on Punk Hazard that we all forgot about. <laughs> that's a that's a suppressed that's a suppressed memory already. What was the question again? It's, like it's the awful. like the parasites. What bad memories would the Straw Hats use to tell that they're real? When um, um, when like, Nami killed that guy, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> <laughs> when. Uh, <laughs> when oh, oh Usa, Usopp versus Luffy. That's true. Yeah. That's an I'm easy actually, one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually um, the answer. I'm, just, I'm trying to think of some other situations. Uh, when they when, tried to eat Chopper that time. I'm sure that yeah. wasn't for Chopper. That's a good one. <laughs> when uh, Zoro stole Sanji's uh, chance in the spotlight at the end of Thrower Bark. <laughs> yeah, I think. That was my scene, you son of a bitch. <laughs> It's like, um, it's like a Jenna Maroney. Oh, kind of the, when they all got separated. Uh, Shibandi. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Almost, that's a really easy one, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, this one comes from Shelly, who said, you've talked about the different arcs of One Piece being shaped by different mm -hmm. themes. For example, the current one being dominated by the theme of family, blood versus surrogate, and parents versus children. And to a lesser extent, food. Uh, do you guys have a favorite theme so far in the series? Or do you have any that you would like to see in future arcs? It's a very broad question, so take it how you want here. Mm. I, mean, I, I just I've always loved the uh, the Jaius Gaipia theme of just romantic adventure, where it's just all about uh, doing it doing it for the sake of it, basically. Well, yeah. I also, in in uh, following on that, I like the theme actually of Skypea itself being an examination of the colonization of like North America, like. It's 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 an it's an allegory and it cha and it shifts the uh, the blame and not the blame but like why people did things that it's not you know it's not what happened in real life obviously but it's sort of a different take on it and p how do people deal with that that was uh, I really liked uh, Sky. I, well, speaking of, yeah, of right. those two, I I do think it is it's kind of interesting that the um our, our motivations as we follow like the main characters kind of echo a little bit it's like luffy they think they're going up to the sky to go on adventure and find gold um which is 
probably like pretty much, you know, it's, that's basically what, you know, Columbus and, and all of their types were trying to do is trying to get a, around the world to make more money. Um, and then they find out that, oh, actually, there's a much uh, there's much more to this story um, with the people who actually live there and, and so on. But unlike yeah. Columbus, um, Luffy learned that <laughs> <laughs> and did not that infect them all with uh, smallpox. Um, we're actually on, on this on this subject. Uh, we're planning on doing to celebrate the upcoming election in November, uh, several One Piece political columns, uh, such as the themes we've already discussed here. Huh. Um, Use the term celebrate lately. Yeah, that's a very light way to put it. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to make it fun, Steve. So we'll do some, I, I, like for me, the fit, my favorite themes in One Piece are, are the ones like the ones in Skypea. Um, there's also just like the, there's really dark but important themes, including uh, slavery in Shabandi, uh, civil rights in, um, in uh, Fishman Island. And yeah. Even when those aren't executed, you know, the perfectly, I think they're really, really cool to see in a Japanese manga. Like these are all American themes, if if, if you think about it, those three specifically. Um, and yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, go racism ahead. and classism really do seem to like permeate through everything. Like it, yeah. it's not really designated to just one arc. Like it, we saw a lot of it in Sabodi, like during the auction house again, during uh, the Fishman Island arc, even like kind of a little bit with, uh, with the dress Rosa arc too. Like when That's they were true. going to like the old yeah, and the, and stuff. So in this newest, uh, Z- uh, Zoe episode, they're talking about, uh, Oh yeah. And the races. The the mix... And then even, even with big mom saying that she, her dream is to create an Island with all the races together. Like that does seem to be something that permeates through everything. And while I feel like, Fishman Island didn't really do a good job uh, as a story overall. I feel like um, an arc focusing on that in the future would be really interesting and kind of fascinating from Oda's perspective. So. Well, looking at the Fisher Tiger flashback, which I still love a lot. I like the Fisher Tiger flashback, yeah. But that's, I think, probably one of the best crafted uh, civil rights kind of like that and Otohime's story together. I th- in, in retrospect, I think was actually very well done. Um, mm-hmm. It's just everything around that. That I right, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, th- let's move on to the next question uh, from Blackleg Nami, who says, so since Pudding has not gotten an Oda box yet, uh, and with the most recent chapters, uh, wondering if it's possible that she's one of the Sweet Three ge- Generals, Ally Didn't you ask enemy. this question last week? Oh, I might have, but I didn't mention this last part, I don't think. Or maybe I did. Uh, mm-hmm. That maybe she has the Godzilla zone fruit, so she could be a literal <laughs> bridezilla. <laughs> <laughs> I I still think I'm I'm still holding strong to my opinion that she is is totally innocent and innocuous um but I am secretly also holding fast to that position so that if it does turn out to be a twist I will be as shocked as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, while I would love, I would love for her to actually be one of the commanders. I actually feel like it was kind of debunked, as well as the Pedro theory being debunked that maybe he was the fourth one that was taken down by a Rouge, uh, just based on that one little interaction that happened when they first met Pudding, when Pedro and Pudding interacted, because they, you know, obviously they both worked with Big Mom before. They would have recognized each other if that was the case. She would have recognized if he was a commander, and he certainly would have recognized if she was one. Mm-hmm. Uh, our next but I qu- want it to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, our next question uh, comes from Scott, uh, and this one, Steve, uh, is about Endless Schmaltz. He said, "I believe I have already come to the conclusion Gundam Wing isn't nearly as awesome as when it aired on Toonami. Do you think you guys could do Ronin Warriors next when Gundam Wing is complete? I remember <laughs> the show being awesome, and I have a feeling it will hold up." First of all, um, we got to do more in the Schmaltz episodes yeah, of Good Wing before yes. we even think about doing other series. Second of all, um, I think Pudding did have an Oda box. No, it was, I think, night- she. Yeah, she just had the owner of the cafe, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Didn't okay. say her name. Ah, all right. Um, anyway, uh, Ronin Warriors. I didn't watch Ronin Warriors. Did I you barely watch Ronin did. Warriors? Like a couple episodes. Um, the, the, designs, really into. the designs were really cool, I remember. They're very 90s, you know, samurai-looking designs. I never really mm-hmm. got super into it. Uh, I think yeah. it was a little before I started watching Toonami, like maybe like just a few months before. I remember watching it. I don't, I don't remember any of it making an impression. 
Right. Like, yeah. I think I think it was Garden Variety Canadian dub for the time. So it might. I mean, it might be ridiculous going back to look at it. Mm-hmm. Who knows? <laughs> First see. of all, got to get more episodes out and kind of wing and and the Garlic Junior stuff. No. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, before I even think of doing more, I have some ideas of what where I want to take Schmaltz if we keep doing it past uh, these two shows. But uh, it's we got to see. Yeah, um, Steve gets to decide that. Uh, mm-hmm. And well, but I I like you know I don't if if it was just everything I liked then it wouldn't be a very interesting show. <laughs> It'd um, be about wrestling. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Stephen. Steve Yurko presents another fucking wrestling podcast. <laughs> Stephen, uh, we're ready for some Reddit questions. What do we have this week? All right. Well, we'll start off with Typeset, who says, in honor of Labor Day, what positions would you guys want to be on the Sunny? For example, I'd personally like to be the shipwright. In honor of Labor Day. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, don't hear, you don't hear that preface that often. Um, Captain? <laughs> Zoro doesn't really have a job. <laughs> he sort of loiters about the... He gets uh, to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Zoro uh, has probably the sweet spot there. He's the, the nappist of the group. <laughs> the nappist. Uh, I'll take archaeologist just because uh, I don't know what else I would do. Oh, I it's, an awesome, it's a, it's a I pretty cool read. library. So. Yeah. I'd love I'll to be a musician. I have the ability to read. <laughs> musician. I'd love to entertain the crew. Yeah. yeah I'll do doctor because then I could see Nami and Robin naked. So. Yeah. <laughs> doctor. <laughs> God, you don't. You're completely. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have your budget. license revoked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at that progina. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Steve, it is a pirate Actually, ship, and I don't think anyone gives out doctoral licenses to pirates. <laughs> so I think Roger's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. As long as Nami and Robin don't beat him to a pulp, which they would. No, I'd. I'd be a doctor like Hugh Look, man. Like he wasn't actually a doctor. He was just like, ah, take this. You'll feel better. They'll be like, yeah, I got a bit of a headache. Ah, you know what? Hey, Sanji, give us some, uh, give us some hard liquor. Here you go. You'll be fine. Just well, <laughs> as rub a little bit of your juice. Ew, right. I'll take the frog juice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone else? Steven, do you have a... We will go... Mm, uh, musician. I like that, too. Okay. We'll, we'll be the twin Steves. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the best of two Stevens. Um, uh, even Stevens. Uh, okay, we... <laughs> You can move on, Stephen. Stephen's uh, with a PH. The uh, Valentine Menace says, "Hey, you guys want to help me with this? Hey, OPP, I'm about halfway through part five in JoJo's. Maybe Robin has a broken power and is only really given one proper fight, like a character in part five, or she will remain underused forever. Does anyone know what this is referring to? I'm barely into part five. Um, yeah, I can tell you that. Four, so. I can tell you that uh, everyone's powers are ridiculous." Um, I, I, okay. What the hell's the question? <laughs> it it Robin, wasn't even a question. Joe, part yeah. five. Eh? These two things? Like, yes, those two things. Mistress Page wants to know, um, says, Hi, OPP. I hope everyone is doing well. After the recent chapter, it has made me wonder just how Luffy and co. are going to get Sanji out of World of Whole Cake Island. Because if Luffy is being pushed this much by a general, not even Big Mom herself... And there is no way we can expect him to be able to defeat Big Mom and get the keys for Sanji's handcuffs. Well, that's debatable. The only way out of this that I can see is to get Big Mom on their side, and I bet Nami and her Viva card will play an important role in this. Otherwise, color me clueless on how they're getting out of this mess. What do you guys think? Can you see any other way in which they will have a hope of rescuing Sanji and escaping? And I'm going to point out here that uh, there is another question later on that uh, may be an interesting side note to this. I'll just so. say, throughout the series, 90% of the time, Luffy isn't using his full power. Um, I still think that Luffy probably has power beyond what we've seen. I think Roger's theory you know, lays into that pretty well. Um, I, I like that one. Uh, so I, I think we'll see, if not a Gear 5 or 6 or something, at least some different usage of his power that kind of kicks a little more ass than he is at the moment. It was a really good theory that was brought up. I, I did a live stream recently, and I, the guy's name was Dave. I'm sorry that I don't remember your full username. Uh, but he brought up the connection between like the fight and how everything's sort of culminating at the end of Whole Cake, and then how Caesar needs to create that giant uh, serum. You know how that's the whole big thing, that Caesar needs to create the giant serum? Uh-huh. Well, that like the, the Dave's, Dave's idea was that Caesar very quickly puts together one that creates like temporary giganticism. 
And that yeah. somehow Luffy takes that serum and then goes toe to toe with Big Mom with like a giant version of Gear Four. That sounds like a Seinfeld episode, but with One Piece, where all these little things come together at the end to make up. Well, Caesar is kind of a Seinfeld character. He's kind of the yeah. George of <laughs> One Piece. <laughs> Caesar clown is George Costanza. I love it. That's I'm done. That's crazy. Yeah. What? <laughs> Caesar being around makes uh, makes so many different possibilities for the rest of this yeah. arc. Yeah, yeah, no, I really like that one too, Roger. Uh, thank you, David. David? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dave's right. not here, man. <laughs> Dave's not here. Uh, Gladius Wing Zero says, uh, after the latest chapter, Cracker joined the Meow Ban Brothers Club of Characters Who Could Tort Their Bodies Along, I'm, I'm going to add, uh, underneath their outfits, with Chess Marimo, Treble, Baskerville, and Shaman Bucci. This makes me think about One Piece character quirks that may have been repeated. What do you say are the most notable character quirks that Oda uses a lot? Oof. Giant boobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you know he also took a page out of uh, uh, Pearl and a little bit of Captain Kuro, I gotta say. Uh, yeah. With Cracker saying, like, oh, I don't like pain. He definitely revels in the fact that his wanted poster isn't a photo of him. That's very Captain Kuro- uh, Chicken shit heel. Um, <laughs> I can't uh, wait to see Cracker get hurt though because of that. that yeah, that, makes it that, so much that more might satisfying. Mm-hmm. that that probably will play into like what we'll see in the morning when you know their fight is over. It's like if Luffy just lands one punch on him, does he just you know crumble yeah. uh, <laughs> and and start crying That's or something? The way that Cracker crumbles. Oh. <laughs> I have to yeah! write that one. Thank you. <laughs> I, I would say, as far as answering this question, other notable character quirks, the one that we have noted a lot, because um, he does it a lot, is the whole, like, you know, oh, I don't know anything about this, but here, let me tell you these things. Or, or I, I'll never speak. Um, here, let me uh, list all the reasons why I will, I will you know, never speak. Because I, kn- I would never tell you that blah, 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 blah. You know, like, uh, Fukuro did that. Yeah, tight um, mouth Fukuro, wasn't that his Yeah. Life, yeah. I thought that was a good gag the first, the first time I saw it. And right, then, but uh, he's done it like three or four times. Yes, yes. Perverted male characters. Yeah, totally. Yep, I have a lot of those. Um, um, oh, getting Bill, st- villain, villains who don't shut up. Getting stuck in walls. I can't believe you don't shut up. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not a character quirk. But for Luffy, it is. <laughs> getting stuck in things. Getting stuck in things. Oh, yeah. Um... I guess Zoro gets was the last lost? time he got stuck oh, in something? Oh, wait, well, we... Well, we I guess the repeated quirks is more what he's talking about. Yeah, repeated about. quirks, I'm yeah. sorry. All of, the, all of the Zoro fight characters having to have a sword, even if they don't necessarily need to have one. <laughs> Pika. Like, what the heck was that? Pika out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, I'm a sword fighter now. Like, we go through this whole thing with him creating mountains. <laughs> and then at the ending, he just, like, pops out. He's like, yeah, I got a sword. <laughs> um... Hmm. Yeah, they're shared quirks. There's, there's got to be more. This, this series is way too long. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, unique laughs. Eh? Yeah. Eh? I don't, I don't think that unique fits into the are, spirit of the yeah, question. That's something everybody has. Yeah. Um, but it's let's, a uh, safe answer. <laughs> let's move on to Idach, who wonders Hey, OPP. Do you think crackers biscuits taste nice? <laughs> no. That's that's a that, <laughs> no. that that's a that's a so. very Zach adjective. <laughs> Do they taste nice? I feel like they have I just to. had an like, amazing meal. It tasted so nice. I, I feel like mama has very strict like flavor standards. <laughs> like if it doesn't match up, then you know, she's she's gonna get mad. Yeah, he probably he probably sweats a nice honey glaze. Ooh, honey. And he bleeds <laughs> jam, so it's not Yeah, funny. he no, he makes jam. God, that's so stupid. <laughs> oh, <he laughs> that was good though. You brought up you brought up a good thing though, Steve, with the whole like storing the jam in the empty bodies of the biscuit soldiers. Like for whatever reason that just like Went past me when I was reading it was it in the chapter, joke, but totally. But now it might have to be canon. No, now. it's not. It's definitely not a joke anymore. As soon as you said it, I was like, "That's totally." Yep, that's where he stores all the like, jam. Like, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> of. Freaking, I'm just thinking of like overacting death. Like, like 
like in Zootopia, which is the blah, blah. Oh, right, right, right. She shoots out the ketchup. Yeah. Yeah, like just. <laughs> oh, that's just jam to make you think I was bleeding. Like that's that's a little much. No one's yeah. gonna be like, "Well, I punched him, but he's not bleeding. He it must was, be it a." Was used, it was used better in Zootopia. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Summer Otaku says, "Hey guys, hope you're having a great weekend." Question: We've seen Brule use her fruit to make animals look like people we know. Do you think she can use this power on people beyond herself? Imagine Sanji being tricked into attacking Nami, who now looks like someone more villainous, or Brule being forced to use the power to make Nami look like pudding to take her place at the wedding and escape with Sanji. Or hell, in that same vein, make Yonji look like Sanji to marry Pudding in Sanji's place. Hmm. I like those ideas. So, in one of those scenarios, wouldn't Sanji and Nami then be technically married? No, yeah, that this, wouldn't this... work. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just capture Cracker and have him make a Sanji biscuit clone that bleeds yeah. raspberry jam? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think in certain aspects, both of those characters are have, you know, it depends on how Oda wants to limit the definition of their powers, you could say that they're both kind of broken characters or broken powers because, you know, he could make them do whatever he wants, pretty much. I will say, though, I don't, like, I've seen a lot of people complaining about the powers. I don't necessarily think their powers are any more broken than sugar erasing people's memories when they turn them into toys. Like, right. Oh, yeah, sugar had, like, four powers in one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hated that. It all power. just de- oh. it depends on how Oda wants to like make something dramatic. So, you know, he just kind of twists the powers to whatever, and you know, whatever even, suits his purpose. E- even Law's power is ridiculous. Like, mm-hmm. okay, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eleven Orange Blue has an interesting note. Um, I was listening to one of your old podcasts and came across Garchu and its translation in Nepali. Actually, Garchu is actually a do verb in Nepali. So love you would actually translate to Maya Garchu, with Maya being love. Just thought you should know. Uh, anyways, love listening to you guys. Keep up the good work. Cool. cool. Thanks. So, we have, uh, well, I mean, maybe we don't have listeners in Nepal, but we definitely have Nepali listeners. Cool. Yeah, love, love me do. I mean, we um, were trying to all have exclusively Nepalese listeners, but mm-hmm. one day. <laughs> uh, all Blue Chaser. This is the one that I was referring to earlier. I really like this question. Hello. I know I'm probably not alone thinking the exchanging of engagement gifts, which was mentioned uh, in Big Mom's itinerary for the day, is going to feature a certain unexploded treasure box from Fishman Island. I'm kind of wondering your theories on when that explosion is going to happen, who's affected, and how powerful it might be. Like, is it weak, but it blows up in Judge's face with just enough force to blow his helmet off and reveal some important truth of his eyebrows? (laughs) Or maybe it's strong enough to seriously injure Ichiji and Niji, and that makes Judge pissed off enough to tack Big Mom. Any ideas? I have an idea. Sanji's going to be the one getting that box. He knows what's in it, but he has to open it. It's mm. like a sitcom. It's literally a sitcom. I, I really love this idea that that is where it's going to show up. Like it's going to be, you know, it's like the Russian roulette. Like when is it going to go off and how much chaos is it going to cause? And I, and I really like that idea specifically because, I mean, we've been talking about this this box for a long time. You know, it was several yeah. arcs ago that it was set into motion. But I, I just love that that storytelling device of having some unresolved plot thread that you know it's you know it's it's in this case it would be Chekhov's box it's going to explode at some point um and just having it kind of hanging over lurking in the background and then you know radically changing events at some much later stage in the story is is super cool and it's this the sort of thing that you pretty much only see Oda doing in in terms of uh, manga and uh that I, I love that idea that that it, that that will cause some you know dramatic turning point in the arc um but i you know who knows how how it will actually play out i mean it, the fact that it hasn't exploded yet really does mean that it's coming back in this arc like yes <laughs> oh, yeah years yeah, later it's got to mm-hmm. uh, millard fillmore 13 says i feel like chopper's plan has one fatal flaw there's going to be a lot of shirtless guys taking snailstagram pictures in those mirrors. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> snailstagram. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Because yeah. it is. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. 
<laughs> uh, Super Dube says, uh, as this art continues to move forward, the more I'm hoping that Luffy ends up crashing the wedding like Chris Catan in A Night at the Roxbury. Uh, with that said, I'm starting to think that this is going to be the arc of Luffy awakening the gum gum fruit. If he's having trouble with Cracker, he'll have to get some kind of power up to be able to stand a chance against her, Big Mom. And I don't think a fifth gear would make sense. Second gear puts pressure on the vascular system. Third gear inflates his bones. And fourth gear inflates his muscles. I don't know what else he could enhance to make a fifth gear. How many gears uh, does a car usually have? Really depends. depends. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all that is assuming he all, all that is assuming he fights Big Mom at all, and her physical strength is that much greater than Cracker's. Maybe Nami asking who the homies fear more is foreshadowing that Cracker might be a stronger fighter than Big Mom, and her strength. As a uh, as a Yonko for Emperor doesn't come from personal fighting ability, but the loyalty of her massive family and her soul stealing fruit. What are your thoughts on that? I thought Nami I was trying. Nami was trying to say that um, you know they're more afraid of her because she has like the Beaver card. I thought that yeah, was, she was a trying powerful to say soul. That. Yeah. yeah. So I think they are more scared of Big Mom. Yeah, I think Big Mom's probably very very strong on her own. I, I'm at this point I'm just assuming that the that Germa are the main villains here and not Big Mom necessarily. I, I still agree with that. Despite everything well, especially given what uh, Big Mom was saying earlier in this chapter. Like her, her attitude towards the the triads. And and from what I'm seeing, cars have anywhere from four to six gears, sometimes seven. So I mean I still think we could see some more I, I don't know what Oda would do. I don't think Oda had the idea for fourth gear until more recently. Um, I don't think like at the beginning he's like, oh, this will be second, this will be third, this will be fourth, this will be fifth, and or whatever. I, I think right. I think that's something he probably does more as he goes along. I think there's other stuff he plans way ahead. Of yeah, time. I just don't think that's one the, of them. Yeah, I think definitely the powers are are stuff that you know he he kind of comes up with whatever he's feeling like at the moment. Um, because they're not necessarily like plot related, um, where they need to be set up in a certain way. I, um, I mean, fourth came out just around the same time as the Kabuki play, and right, he was doing he could a lot have been of stuff inspired. Again. Yeah, I think I think that's probably what happened. Well, um, Oda did say already in that one uh, in that one interview he did. He still has no idea how Luffy will eventually take on Kaido. He's like, yeah, I have, I have no idea what's going to happen there. So he needs to get some sort of inspiration to sort of create another power. But, but at the same. We- I was just going to say quick, at the same time, he had that book about uh, th- this arc back in Dressrosa, for those who don't, yeah. from the, the Shonen Jump Ryu interview. Go yeah. ahead. I was just going to say, before we move away from this, though, in terms of, like, Big Mom's physical strength, I mean, even beyond her devil fruit powers and her, like, ripping the souls out of people, she does seem to be really pretty terrifying. I mean, she eats people. I don't know if that has anything to do with the devil fruit power, but we've seen her also like ravaging through the towns and ripping up buildings and stuff. So she does seem to be a powerhouse even outside of her devil fruit powers. I would have said Mm -hmm. she would have had the Godzilla fruit, but we already know that's not true. (laughs) She literally Godzilla that building and I'm using that as a verb. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Liquid Gaimon says, uh, wants to know, which five straw hats would you put up against the Vin Smokes, Judge, Reiju, Yonji, Ichiji, and Niji, in an ultimate game of family feud to determine who gets Sanji <laughs> and who would host it? Mm. So Ichiji has to be Zoro. Ichiji's got to be Zoro. Right? Well, it's not necessarily pairing them up. Uh, it's family it's feud. It's system. not like, I, I think the game show, right? Yeah, it's the yeah. game yeah. show. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Ah. Uh. Nami so it's would most, have it's to mostly be there. like who, just, who are the yeah who are the smartest not not the Brooke table. and not Frankie because yeah. they would think of way too weird things for the the yeah. survey. You <laughs> don't you don't have to be smart for Family Feud. That's like one of the great. You just no, have I'm to know saying, what other people think about things. That's it. Right. And Brooke and Frankie don't really have common sense. Um, yeah. Chopper, uh, Robin and sure Nami would be one sure. of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Robin Nami, Nami would Chopper. have to be straight woman. Uh, Sanji, yeah. I think, would have to be. Yeah, in there. Sanji would be good. I don't no, no, think he, he's the prize. He he is the oh, prize. Oh yeah, so, so you can't, you can't. Yeah. I don't think Luffy you would include the Grand Fleet members, or could you include like yeah, like can, uh, their can Jinbei be there? <laughs> Jinbei would probably do well. I don't think Luffy would Maybe. do that badly. Um, at family, <laughs> Luffy would so, be uh, like uh, Charlie and Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> in that in that Family <laughs> Feud episode. <laughs> All right, who who is the Steve Harvey here? Who who hosts? Oh my God. Steve Harvey or Richard Dawson? No, no, I think you'd have to pick a, a, a One Piece character. 
Um, Who's the there's... announcer guy from Dress Rosa? Getz. Oh, Getz. That'd be good. <laughs> That's... I, 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 I would, from the Davy back fight. I, I would love to see like Bartolomeo doing that. And he's just like giving hints to the straw hats, uh, <laughs> like subtly as he's honestly, I could, I could see pound hosting it too, because I could see pound pulling off all those Steve Harvey impression of uh, like facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Nicky grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Nicky. Um, huh? an, a like a naked grandma. God, I don't know this reference, but it sounds like Steve Harvey. No, it's, that is just a Steve Harvey. For, it's something some stupid person said of Family Feud. That sounds about right. Uh, what's the next uh, question, Stephen? Prince of Assassins wants to know, if the One Piece world had internet, what kind of clickbait articles would there be on the sides of pages? <laughs> what, what character would they have as pictures? Like mm-hmm. for Alvita, woman loses over 300 pounds by eating this one strange fruit. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Like that. Um, hmm. a Boa Hancock would be like the uh, I don't know the uh, the Jennifer Aniston of the One Piece world on the cover of every yeah tablet. she'd be on everything yeah you just have Boa. <laughs> um, uh, you won't believe what's on this naked woman's back. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, man. I would probably have to click that. Um, hmm. Amazing, Zach. probably like amazing, uh, amazing sexual transformation and something with Ivankov. Yeah, I can see that nice. too. Yeah, yeah. Are are horm- hormones good for you, or something like? <laughs> are too many hormones? Do they? I don't know. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, I guess we will move on to gentleman bastard, um, who is going to bring up the. Uh, Awakened powers again. Good thing dude's um, since, Ro- since, Ro- he, he since Roger is here. Yeah. Um, he mentioned Roger, uh, so he's going to try to expand on it and uh, summarize. Uh, like Roger, I also believe that Cracker has awakened his devil fruit, and that is why, like Doflamingo, he's able to create clones slash puppets with his devil fruit. We saw that Doflamingo's awakened powers allowed him to turn objects into string. Would it not make sense then that an offshoot ability would to me? To, would be to make string or biscuits into realistic looking objects such as Dofi's clones or Cracker's armors. Uh, however, this brings up another question. Now that we know about Awakening, will we see a large number of pirates with this power? Does this run the risk of making Awakening a person's powers less rare? It's the new world, man. Yeah, I mean, everybody even has Conqueror's Hockey in the new world. Look at Don Chin Zhao had Conqueror's Hockey, Doflamingo right. had Conqueror's Hockey, so... That's it. These are the two, I think. These are... Hey, I mean, getting Big Mom and Kaido basically have to have it. Yeah, Probably. they're gonna have to. The people... Yep. Conqueror's Hockey is a one in one million. We got a, we got a statistic for that back in Amazon Lily, I remember. Um, and we've only seen it in the new world two times i think i think it's just those two roger oh really uh, yeah i can't think of anyone else i mean since after dressrosa who would have had it i'm sure big mom and kaido yeah. both do because they are yeah. big players that makes sense they're conquerors they are the they are kings. literally conquerors yeah, yeah so. they're emperors um i i think in general the way one piece powers work is oh this is rare and then slowly over time everyone starts having it but that's also because we're going through this survival tournament uh of a series and and that's just Mm going to be the way the ones who make it to this point right are going to be the strongest remember devil fruits were rare when we first started the series i think they said something along those lines now we have one for biscuits (laughs) (laughs) And there you go. Yeah, it's so. Of course, we're going to start seeing that kind of stuff more, and that's fine. People are stronger. I don't think there's anything else to that. Yeah. This gets stronger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, uh, last last question on Reddit. I'm not sure if any of us will be able to answer this. Uh, Nivers mm-hmm. wants to know if the Straw Hats played Overwatch. What characters would they play as? Does anyone here? <laughs> oh, play awesome. Roger. Roger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's going to be tough, though. None of you, none of you guys have played Overwatch yet. No, no, no. Oh man, some of us don't play video games at all. Man, all right, all right, it's on me then. All right, uh, Luffy would be Junkrat for sure because he's like a crazy manic sort of out there, fun, lovable character. Uh, Farah would be Robin, I think. Robin and Farah, I could see her playing Farah. Um, who's like a? Oh, uh. 
Bastion would be Frankie, because Bastion's a cyborg. He's a, well, he's an Omnic, but it's whatever, he's a robot, so that would be Frankie. Uh, Brooke would be Reaper, who's like, he's not dead, but whatever. Goes along with the Brooke and Reaper, that works. Who's like a cutesy little character? I think Diva and Chopper would get along. Diva's like this uh, professional gamer girl from Korea who has a giant mech, and she likes cutesy pink stuff, and she's always chewing bubblegum, so I feel like her and Chopper would be good. That sounds right. Uh, yeah. Nami. Who would Nami play as? Does anybody have weather powers? I don't think anybody has weather. I'm trying to think if anybody has like weather or electric powers. For whatever reason, I'm drawing in a blank. I almost always play Junkrat, so rarely do I <laughs> do I ever play the other characters. Um, that's enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> I assume those were the correct answers. Thank you, Roger. Uh, <laughs> so that's it for Reddit, right, Stephen? That is it. All right. Thank you for doing those. And so that means it's time to. Peace the tweet. Thank you, Ed. What do we got on Twitter this week? Well, this week we start off with at Quip Quest, who is very excited about Niji and calls him Vin Smoke 2 Electric Blue Galoo. Nice. <laughs> wow. Well done. There's a lot of puns in that. Uh. Natalie Manahan asks, I recently learned that I have the same birthday as Gecko Moria. What One Piece characters do you share birthdays with? I do, not, I, do, I do not because my birthday is too late in the month. Yeah, March 9th, Frankie. Oh, cool. I'm Duval. Usopp. Yep. Steve, uh, you according, have... according to Volume 79, I still don't have anybody. Me neither. Um, I forget which... I think I have some random character, but... In real life, I found out that I actually share the exact same birthday as Adam Driver, and we were born in the same city. So I could have been in the hospital with Adam Driver. I, I could have wow. been. I was the Neville Longbottom to uh, Adam Driver's uh, <laughs> Kylo Ren. Wow, I just realized my birthday, I'm looking on the, the official birthday list for One Piece. I have three major characters who were born on my birthday. Because Frank, uh, Frankie, Shanks, and Mihawk... All share March right, night. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Dang, that's awesome. Are you an a- are you an Aries, Roger? Or are you uh, Pisces? Pisces. Oh, Pisces. Let's see how it is. Uh, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Halcyon Dawn asks. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on Maki Otsuki's new song "Destiny." Why that would we have covered from, that? That's from, is that from the, the Heart of Gold. Yeah. Heart of Gold. Well. It's Sam, do you still want to do a Heart of Gold recap? Is that something you're still interested in? Uh, I know Brian was saying he kind of wanted to. It, because if, if you guys... super interested in it at this point, but I'll do it if, if there's enough demand. Um, yeah, if you want, we could do it in, in either this break or the next break. We could we could throw that in. Um, mm-hmm. Just, yeah, it's up to Sam. And if, that, if we do that recap, we will talk about that song. Um, All right. I do want to watch it eventually, so I would like to talk about it. Um, what's next, Dad? Next one comes from H Donut. Um, what do you think would be the names of other sweets commanders and their devil fruits? Hmm. God, his name uh, is H Donut. I, this seems this is going to be kind of broken, but I've been thinking about this, and I was thinking back on the islands that we've already seen that have dedicated islands. And if you go back to that map with pudding, there was like a biscuit island and a chocolate oh, island yeah. and a cheese island. Yeah. I am thinking that there's going to be a cheese commander. And I could see his thing being really broken because he'd be like Swiss cheese where you just punch a hole through him and then it doesn't even affect him. <laughs> um, so I think a cheese devil fruit user is going to be one of the other commanders. I, still don't I, know I would actually. It's, too, it's too bad Zoro isn't in this chapter or in this. Uh, yeah. It waste up the cheese. Crew. Yes. Totally. Can't right. Totally. Cheese. totally. Mm. Oh, can't yeah. cut the cheese that's true <laughs> cheese and cracker oh, so, yeah. <laughs> wow um i'm yeah. trying to or what was it crack biscuit and cracker there was there it's a... biscuit biscuit cheese cocoa and the other one was i think jam those were the islands that were on the map i was gonna ask that, uh, thank you i a jam i i think is likely that would explain how he had the jam to use the blood i think that would uh yeah that would be a cool time. Be funny if was it the he could be like Jam Brady? He loses to a football to the face. <laughs> oh my Jam god! Brady. Jam Brady. Um, 
Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Oh, it's nuts and cracker. That's what I was thinking of. Funny, funny. Nuts and gum together at last. <laughs> well, no, there was a, for those who don't remember, like a year and a half ago, we did an episode called Nuts and Cracker because in a vending machine in Japan is a nuts and cracker. That's just what it, that's what it was called. Nuts and cracker. Just a single cracker and a bunch of nuts. Um, just like Whole Cake Island. Um, there you go. It all comes full circle. <laughs> just like this podcast. Uh, oh, oh, wait, who's the cracker? We, we have way more than one cracker. <laughs> <here. laughs> There's a lot of crackers here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, we're all nuts and we're all crackers here. It's, it's fine. Um, not all, but most. Some um, of us are matzo. <clears throat> matzo. Right. <laughs> that would be a great sweet commander. Hello, awesome, yeah. hello, Amatsu. Why are you trying to cut me? I don't understand. I didn't do anything. <laughs> that would be like the black sheep. The black sheep because he's incredibly, in, in, uh, completely devoid of taste. <laughs> There's no taste whatsoever. That would be one of the stepfathers. The name would be Matsu. Uh, you know? Oh, I hope Oda. Come on. Oh, that's like, <laughs> but that's like the worst of Jewish pastries or foods to use. We actually have good pastries. That oh, Matsu just awful. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Hido Sicarius asks, discuss the concept of awakened hockey, like what you think would be the abilities of each awakened type. Uh, Do we have no. to? No. Do we have awakened to? Awakened hockey, did he just say? Awakened that's, hockey, the concept. I think, he, I think he means awakened devil fruit. I think that's... No, so if he means awakened hockey, he can go and check out my video on the Rogers Base YouTube <laughs> channel for awakened hockey, and if Shanks' crew might all have awakened Is hockey. Is that a thing? Go check that video out. That's actually a, a, I did a whole video on it, breaking down if there was going to be an awakened version of hockey. Yeah. Uh, so this is your theory. So we don't have yeah, to uh, answer this question. Yeah, then. don't have to go through it. Yep. Just go watch the video. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Smith of Stories asks, uh, well, not asked, but you would like to thank Roger for opening up the One Piece community to be back when he found your channel back in February. So. Oh. Yeah. You got these guys to thank though too. I feel like don't be thinking me exclusive. <laughs> I feel like. The podcast is the reason why I even started my YouTube channel in the first place. I would listen to you guys and Forever World on YouTube and uh, Sawyer and King of Lightning and stuff. So, yeah, if anything, I mean, I wouldn't be making videos if not for them. So, duh. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Ken zero three at Ken zero zero three asks, "Who is your favorite minor or filler character in One Piece?" Um, uh, those are two wild. very different it's things. Fine, yeah. yeah, minor. Uh, how about Sarfunkel? That's as minor as you get. There you <laughs> go. Which one was he? Or, uh, no, she uh, is Gaimon's um, girlfriend. Minor oh. slash filler are two very different things. Uh, I like filler, that guy. Say, uh, filler characters has got to be Eric because he dies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really, out of all the filler characters, I got to say Eric, um, he, he had a funny design, he had a funny quirk, and he was voiced by Frieza. So. Who now does oh. Caesar, yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe my favorite filler character is the guy with a giant disco coke nostril from Logtown. Oh god. Jose. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the Honey Queen from movie two, who is one of the Trump siblings, which seems uh very culturally. I, I, relevant I, I right can't now. I don't think <laughs> movie counts as filler though. It's not I'm gonna filler. go with uh, I'm gonna go That's with Kagiku. Enough. Who? Who's that? That's my favorite minor character, exactly. No. Kagiku <laughs> is a member of the Creek Pirates. He's a locksmith. He only appears in the manga. So he's like basically one of the background in the, in the anime? on No, he only appears in the manga. He's he's named in like one of the log in one of the oh, info books. The data books, yeah. Wait, guys, I know oh, my favorite oh, character. Yeah, he's a data book. Who is it, Zach? I know my favorite on his head. My favorite minor character, and I Steven remind me his name. Uh, is the guy who fix all of, fixes all of Oda's ed, uh, errors by f- being Mina like Tomo. a mean? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he goes around like fixing doors that were down in the oh, previous panel. Oh, yeah. I name. <laughs> oh, can I choose Oda actually? Because he was in a filler. He was in the the Soccer King filler. Oh yeah, yeah. Oda, Oda, that's not Oda. Oda. <laughs> I, I can't say movie, especially the shorts aren't in filler. Um, I don't know. I. Uh, otherwise, I'd say like Shiki or something, but oh wait, he's canon. <laughs> so, so I was thinking of minor filler characters from each of those things. Like I was. My ones. Yeah, that's the thing. I just don't. I, I I couldn't say movies or filler mm-hmm. because they're not taking place during the anime. They're not eating up time. They're something completely separate. Does it really matter? Uh, kind of cool then. I like Silver from. Uh, oh no, I'm gonna go with Desire from the the recent filler arc we just had. Oh, yeah, Desire that, was cool too. Yeah, that filler arc was so. Uh, Great. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, well, I'll, I'll, to be fair to Roger, she wasn't that bad in it. I mean, she wasn't. Yeah, Desire you know, was all right. 
It was very mad, uh, I think, is the conclusion we came up to, which is not bad for filler. It's just mad. Uh, Ed, what's the next based, question? Oh, okay. Stephen, go ahead. Yeah, go based, ahead. On des- based on design, my favorite would be uh, the guy whose who's body is cart. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Evelyn, Evelyn. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> underused. Oh, totally. Only based underused. on design. <laughs> underused. He should have been the main character. Um, what's that next? should have been the final villain. Who cares about freaking Axel from Guilty Gear? Or Blackbeard. Um, what's, what's next? Given uh, Anime Curry 30 asks, given the awful endings of Naruto and Bleach, that's his opinion, do you have any worries about how One Piece may end? I mean, no. I do agree with his opinion. I, I don't think Naruto I, ended. The Naruto awfully. ended. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, Naruto ended the way it probably should have. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I you know, it's a, I, it was a perfectly cromulent yeah. ending for Naruto. Naruto is the Harry Potter of anime, so yeah, the Harry. Potter well, I, I think with, with Oda's assurance that the One Piece isn't friendship or something stupid like that, I a lot of my worries about the end of One Piece were about stuff like that. So yeah, I, do, I don't think Oda's going to give us a fake ending or a. He um, said he would not make it friendship or something stupid like that, right. I think was his exact quote. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not worried. I think our expectations will be too high because they have to be because it's, I do, it's I do have a little bit of worry in that it's something that he came up like a long time ago and, and maybe that might, I don't know. There might be some uh, dissonance between how it, it, whether or not it feels right. Well, as long as he doesn't, yeah. as long as he doesn't do what J.K. Rowling did and like write the ending seventeen years ago and then you know keep the pages stored away so that he can <laughs> toss them in at the end of the, is that you know, what she did? That's yeah, no, she she wrote those like years and years ago, like that whole epilogue with the, the epilogue kids and everything. Thing? Yeah. Really? Oh, there's another. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that. another story recently that I, f- I feel like did that. Now I can't remember what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it's. Not as as well advised as you might think. How I Met Your Mother. That that was that was what happened with How I Met Your Mother. Well, let's not that spoil so every show and <laughs> series for everyone out there. Uh, and, you know, Breaking Bad. There was <laughs> it ended exactly like Breaking Bad did. <laughs> Guys who have not seen Breaking Bad, it ends like Harry Potter and Naruto. Um, what what if Oda did do that? What if, what if Oda already drew the last pages and sort of it's just a completely so different art style? Not only does it look like the early East Blue stuff, but it was like, and then Luffy and Nami had a son named <laughs> Boofy. Bart. Like, Bart. Bart. And it's just like the final chapter of uh, Bleach came out. Like Oda just like went to the vault took him and just threw him in a fire. <laughs> I, look, I've been trying to figure out what we're going to do this week for the Patreon podcast. Let's talk about the end of One Piece a little bit because that's a question right. that often comes up. So we could both yeah, seriously we'll and not this. seriously, we will continue yeah. this conversation for Patreon subscribers. Um, what's next, Ed? Next question comes from Francis M16. Uh, with the One Piece world so rich in history, why not release a canonical film from it? Like, Because, you know, Zed isn't actually canon. Now, okay, we've had this canon discussion a lot, um, and I, I, I kind of tend to agree with what Ed says. If you have to leave reading the books to, to experience it, it probably isn't canon in general. Mm-hmm. I think Oda tries tried to make these uh, the film series, which are these latest three, kind of like semi-canon. I don't know what you want to call mm-hmm. them. I call them semi-canon. Yeah. yeah I, semi-canon. Because there's certain yeah, stuff for them. You don't need to... Yeah, you don't need to watch them to understand the overall plot, but uh, they could fit in. But you could also completely disregard them and you wouldn't miss anything. I would call them optional canon. Like, if you want to include them in your brain as part of the One Piece universe, you can. And if you don't, you don't have to. Why don't we just I would, be like that? <laughs> I, I always I like say, that. like, I consider the... Uh... I personally consider like the backstories to them to be canon. Like I think of Zed as like a real person who yeah. trained those other guys. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agree. Well, and she, and it's a little. Yeah. Well, she well, that backstory yeah. was in the manga. Yeah. So that's yeah. like the episode zero. I mean, sorry, the chapter zero stuff um, and, and so on. I, I think that that would be in it um, as canon. But because Oda drew those, they were actual manga, and they showed up in Shonen Jump. Uh, so that makes me think that that's actual canon. Anyway. What's next? Mm-hmm. Next one comes from Cuddyflam141. That's a great Twitter name. Uh, do y'all think Rouge is the strongest supernova post time skip? 
No. I think it's probably Luffy. Uh, I think it's probably Luffy, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, although Rouge is definitely up there for having been able to defeat uh, one of the, the big mom generals. Other than Luffy, yeah. I think is what he's asking. I'll, I'll be I think Kid, Kid standing and Law standing have, have taken uh, have taken a hit because yes, they yeah. both lost decisively in fights. Um, I will say with Law, though, and I'm not just saying this is like a Law fanboy. I'm saying this like from the perspective of all the fights that he went through. Like... You got to remember, he went through all of Punk Hazard, no real break, went right into Dress Rosa, was shot like a hundred times, went into another <laughs> fight, and then was shot another hundred times. Like, <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> and Law still survived at the end of that arc. He wasn't like captured by Doflamingo, you know, nothing really happened. So well, that's I because guns don't of, mean anything in one piece. <laughs> right. But I would, I'd probably rank it right now based on what we know, Luffy, Urouge, Law, Kid. Mm. I, um, I want to say I think two individuals in particular, and maybe it's their tactics, but certainly deserve a little more credit than they get, and that's uh, Apu and Capone. Um, I think mm. specifically recently, if if not, you know, in brute strength, yeah. I think they I don't do. know. If, yeah, Capone might not be the strongest, but he seems to be one of the smarter guys. Yeah, smarter, yeah, Apu, for sure, Apu for as sure. well. I'd say I think. Yeah proved himself as that and in you know one piece on like dbz or something brute strength isn't everything i think intelligence yeah. is important and kind of just strategy which i think law is actually a great example of i don't think law is necessarily the strongest he, he has a cool cunning power and uh, and thinks things through very far in advance which is important um luffy is kind of well not that but you know. Well, while you mentioned the supernovas too, I was thinking about it. If X Drake, like a lot of people theorize, X Drake might be one of the commanders for Kaido because he's got like an ancient zone. Um, that would maybe put him on the level of someone like Cracker. And then you know, Cracker defeated Arouge. You could maybe argue that like maybe Drake would be above Arouge or on Arouge's level. I don't know. Drake is definitely one of the one of the stronger ones. Yeah, yeah. I I put Drake in that tier of supernova I, I think they're all probably i think oda made them kind of a class for the same for uh, the reason that they're probably all pretty similar in either yeah. strength or where they end up at the end of the series um so i, I wouldn't discount any of them personally uh, even hawkins who we all forgot about <laughs> and definitely not bonnie for sure not bonnie because we all know bonnie is the one piece yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget about Hawkins, guys. Yeah, who cares about Hawkins? <laughs> um, What's next? next and Killers of Smoke. Killers of Smoke. I'm calling it out, man. Yep. <laughs> next one comes from our very own Adil. Hey, guys. What was Oda referring to in this week's author comments? Yeah. Oh, good Good uh, transition here. Yeah. yeah. Should we read the author um, comment? I mean, so, yeah, I'll pull that up right here. It's, um, yeah. it's uh, Oda wrote, what a surprise. No, I'm seriously shocked. I feel the same as everyone. The funny see? thing is that none of the other authors ref referred to this yet, so I feel like Oda's comment was taken later than everyone else, um, which, you know, kind of based on how, how he, he turns in things right at the deadline probably makes sense. Um, but he is almost certainly referring to uh, the announcement that Kochikame is ending after 40 years in, uh, in Weekly Shonen Jump. And apparently years, never missing an issue. Yes, 40 years without a break. I can't believe that. That's, that seems like... I don't know, Steven, you might know this. Does Kochikame still do more of a 14, 15 page gag manga length than the oh, closer to 20? I, I don't no, it might be reduced. Um, yeah, 19 pages is the standard um, length for for chapters. He might have had that reduced at some point, or yeah, he might be considered to be to do a um, you know a comedy series, a gag series. Those are usually given lower page uh, amounts. Uh, I don't know because I've I've never actually like you know kind of fully read Kochikame, but um, can you give us like yeah, a little like background as to what Kochikame yeah, so, is for people who don't know? So it's it's kind of like a a sitcom of sorts. Um, it's uh, the full title. Gosh, what is it? Let me see if I can say this off oh. the top of my head. It's um, Kochira uh, Katsushi Katsushiku Kameari Koen My Hashijo. I believe is the yes. title, which means uh, this is the police box at the park in uh, Kameari neighborhood of Katsushika Ward of Tokyo. And so it's this a little group of um of police uh employees and um you know there's there's some other like there's a little girl in there too that you know it's kind of a a cast of characters 
And basically every chapter is just like sort of about a, a certain topic of interest. And it might be it might be something uh, recent, like newsworthy, or it might just be like, you know, like hobby stuff, like, you know, building plastic models or, um, you know, uh, checking out cars or, um, you know, reading su- such and such, you know, this this thing or that. Um, so there's always a topic of the chapter and it's, you know, just kind of, kind of uh, comedic. They all have their roles and, um uh, you know, it's never really had like story arcs or anything like that. So, you know, you can pretty much like read old chapters from the 80s or, you know, the late 70s. And aside from like the art or the particular subject matter, you know, it might as well be a, a recent chapter. Well, it's, it's very consistent in that regard. So it just celebrated its 40th anniversary um, mm-hmm. and its 200th volume, which comes out simultaneous to its last chapter, as I recall. Um, and it was the o- oldest series in Weekly Shonen Jump. Uh, yes. So what does that do to One Piece? Well, One Piece is now the longest running uh, manga in Jump as of the uh, September 17th. Well, in, uh, in Shonen Jump, the, the overall JoJo series has been going since the 80s, but um, that's that's not in, it's not in Weekly Jump anymore. No. Um, and uh, I, I was actually actually listening to uh, an old episode of the Shonen Jump podcast with uh, Sasaki-san on there, and uh, they were asking him about Golgo um, because that is still ongoing um, as well. But that is done now by a productions company, so it's not actually um, – uh, what's his name? Uh, Takao Saito, I think, is the author of Golgo. Um, so it, you, know, you could argue that that's not technically the same um, thing as you know, the, the one author – um, continuing on, but yeah, um, uh, Akimoto Sensei was like he he would like stockpile chapters, so he would always have like three or four chapters, and so I think that's probably how they were able to pull this off by printing like putting out the volume with all the 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 last chapters at the same day that his final chapter runs because he he probably had it done so far in advance. Um, but yeah, it's not just the end of an era; it's basically the end of an institution. Yes, um, as far as as oh, Jump goes, so very interesting. Now- now I'm wondering about Oda's Guinness Book of World Record. Record? No, it was like, the highest selling manga yeah, it by sold a single the most author. Volumes, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't anything about length. It was just sales. I don't know if it is it the longest ever like uh, created manga ever. I don't, I don't think that is necessarily the case. Mm-hmm. And Shonen Jump, I think it might. Be. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, for Shonen Jump, definitely. Um, and I think that I think that the 200, I think he he may be the first you know book series to to reach that length. But um, according to Wikipedia, uh, in February 2012, it had sold 155 million copies, which is less than half of what One Piece has sold today. Yeah. But it's still incre- incredibly impressive. But yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a very different type of story. It is, yeah. And you could probably just pick up one volume and not have to pick up all of the volumes, like with one. Right, piece. that's the thing. Yeah, it's not plot dependent at all. Um, Mm-hmm. I think Joey even mentioned. I think it would probably be cool, especially you know, as an Amer- as an American or non Japanese reader, to see like a cool like a collection of some best of stuff from Viz or something. Yeah, I, I don't think that would ever actually come about, but it, it's it, it's a neat idea. Yeah. Um, well, if if you're interested, everyone out there, Shonen Jump at Shonen Jump is are the people to tell if if there's a if there's a true. real interest for that. Mm-hmm. I think that answers that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one comes from Keith Hibbs. I'm appalled. No, this isn't a question, but I'm appalled. No one made a joke about pouring one out for the homies on the last episode. How disrespectful. Uh, well <laughs> Still plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> the Kaizoku Rufi asks, am I the only one who wants to know what crackers biscuits taste like? No, we as heard earlier on in this segment. Um, Klein based asks, do you want Bon Clay to return to the story? Also, if so, would you have a problem if he joined the crew after he's all done? Uh, I would love to see Bon Clay again. Yes. Definitely yeah. love to see him again. I don't think he's going to join the crew. Um, be kind of weird if, uh, you know, this, this final war that we're all expecting to conclude one piece, he busts out of Impel down yeah. with all his new comma. Yeah. I yeah. want to see that. Yeah. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Geez. He's too busy being the the queen of the queens right now. I I, I think what Steve said is probably what's going to happen. <laughs> because at that point, Oda's just going to be like, okay, everyone gets to go to this. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. What do you have to lose? Yeah. <laughs> um, go ahead. Okay. What's next? Sir? Yep. 
Next one comes from Ivan Suchich, 1997. Or actually, no, King Cocoa Butter asks, who else thinks Luffy will have to awaken his devil fruit against Kaido to defeat him? Who else do you want to see awaken their devil fruit? Uh, everyone? <laughs> there's, only, there's only so many awakening questions we can answer. Yeah. Because we don't have any answers. And we don't really, like, quite understand what it is. I mean, we kind of, I guess it's the ability to make your devil fruit... Uh, a, involve the board more around you. Yeah, or more powerful. Well, that, that's the uh, thing is that that's, you know, that's how it worked for Doflamingo, but he it wasn't really explicitly stated that that is what being awakened me. It was kind of just like a fancier word for, for what uh, Crocodile was telling him back in the day. Like, you got to train your powers and, you know, reach your next level. So, I mean, if I had a guess for Luffy, it would be the bounce house, you know, like that's what I see, as, which sounds like a fun <laughs> way to use it more than an effective way, but... I'm not quite sure. Um, I guess it would kind of like Law's power being, you know, a room. I feel like turning everything around you in a certain area into into your power um, is kind of what Awakening is. Um, but we don't really know, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get more information probably soon. Uh, so I'd hold those Awakening questions until we get a little more information. <laughs> Please. <laughs> That's a request. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next question comes from uh, Ivan Suchich. Do you think Luffy and Shanks might get down for a sparring battle somewhere in the future of One Piece? That'd be cool. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'd be cool. I'd like I, test, I, test, I, testing their strength against each other. Yeah, I, I think we've talked about how I don't see the two fighting each other all out, but it, maybe that uh, that's like the real question there, I think. It'd be like a Garp and Luffy thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Milos, the creator, uh, brings up something that we had mentioned earlier. Uh, do you think Otis Art has recovered from the hit it took during Dress Rosa? He thought this chapter's visuals were pretty solid. Yeah, it's good, good to see that the fans about. are yeah noticing yeah. the same things that we're, we're noticing. Per- mm-hmm. Personally, I think it's just completely a week to week thing. Like it just depends on how much Oda is drawing in that particular chapter versus the assist. Since and just you know what whatever his condition is how much however much time he is spending on it um because every every time that you think like oh it's it's turning a corner like he's he's getting better again or something then you know within a chapter or two there will be some really sloppy se- looking scenes yeah. um i i don't so i i just feel like it's just whatever you know you happen to get that week i think so I-, I think sorry uh steven i was just gonna say i think zo was pretty consistent um, yeah, Zoe is the best looking arc, I think, visually in terms of consistency and also in terms of like all the detail in the backgrounds, like of, of all the little areas where the minks were living and like even in the battle scenes, Zoe looked really good. I can't think of one bad chapter of Zoe. Yeah, I think I, I spe- since Fishman Island, at least, I think that was, Zoe was probably the nicest we've seen in a while. Um, this arc, I agree with you, Stephen. I think it's been more inconsistent, but I think consistently better than Dressrosa, uh, which was really bad for a few volumes. Yeah. Any other thoughts, anyone? Sorry. No? no it's that Zoe stuff on Zoisha looked fucking great. The assistants Sorry. also really did an amazing job. I mean, Roger, a lot of what Roger's mentioned, the the backgrounds and stuff. I mean, that's the assistance. And Oda mm-hmm. has the best assistance, not surprisingly. Yeah. So yep. that's why they mm-hmm. look that great. Uh, what's next, Stephen? Uh, actually, uh, it's Ed. Ed. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah B seven seven asks, "Where do you think Usopp is heading next with character development? I think he's heading to Wano and then Elbeth." Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> cool. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, next question. Illumi360 asks, when do you think the Straw Heart Alliance will fall and what will cause it? I don't think I don't it think is. I think it will. Yeah. Uh, explain. It, it, it'll be when um, they come back from Big Mom's bearing a whole bunch of bread-based pastries. <laughs> and, uh, I don't like bread. <laughs> My pan fiction finally comes true. <laughs> Your pan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> What's All next? Right. Yeah. Okay, Luffy one asks, do you think the Vin Smokes use dial technology? Um I I think, um, I think they just use their own technology. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's yeah, that their makes, own thing. Yeah. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. 
Okay. Has it been has it been clarified yet whether or not they're like part cyborg or something? Because I'm still confused by that one panel a couple chapters ago when Yonji like put his head in that hydraulic press and then it like went back to normal. <laughs> wasn't yeah. that wasn't that a Three Stooges gag? Yeah, I felt like that was more of a Three Stooges gag. Stuff. Uh, and they stuff. all have like they have like sparking like what's uh what are Ichiji and Niji's titles? Sparking and electric, sparking red and electric blue. I think it's yeah, technology, so it's like, is what they said. Is is what it, it could be technology. I I still kind of have a an outside shot that they're they're kind of like Frankie, like they've got some mm-hmm. weird cyborg um, mm-hmm. stuff going on. I'm thinking too. Seems right. Yeah. Uncle D Ruckus asks, was it ever confirmed <laughs> that when Smiley died, that's how Devil Fruits are reborn? I still think that was a new fruit being created. Hmm. Well, no, nothing's been confirmed. No, yeah. Exactly. No, nothing uh, has been confirmed, but based on the logic of that scene, like that they were yeah. kind of recovering the fruit, um, I think that's as close as we've gotten to a confirmation. So Wait for Dr. Like, Bigger Pants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joker's Tuga Clan asks, what do you think is going to be the solution to defeat Big Mom? Are we going to see Luffy's Awakening or a different form of Gear 4? Yes. Yes. And we've discussed <laughs> this a lot in this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, keep going. Uh, let's see. Um, Tyler Welling asks, Hey, One Piece Podcast, look at the page where Luffy dodges Cracker's honey roll. That's a what? Okay. The honey roll Luffy's, roll is the uh, honey pretzel. Oh, right. Honey pretzel. Yeah. honey pretzel. Honey yeah. pretzel, yeah. Luffy's right arm doesn't have hockey. Why? Thoughts? Let me get a look at that. Yeah, that's gonna... Let me see. Hold this up right now. Yeah, we're all just like because <laughs> it was hours ago at this point now. <laughs> One hour ago. Um, I'm not sure. No, it looks like he has hockey. I'm um, when he pulls his arm his back. Fist, his uh, right fist is white. Which hmm. panel specifically? Weird pretzel. Honey pretzel, where he's shooting the sword right oh, over oh, Luffy's oh, head. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. That might be a mistake. If I had to guess, that would be a mistake. If you get the volume and it still looks like that in the volume, yeah, ask the question again. That's the test. <laughs> and we will answer, but with no reason to know what the answer is. But... <laughs> with no basis whatsoever. Well, that is the arm he got cut on, correct? I mean, maybe it mm. messed up. You've cracked, you've cracked the case. I cracked <laughs> the case. He's recovering. You've cracked the case. I cracked the case. <laughs> Um, but, uh, that was the last question for this week. Okay, thank you, Ed. Uh, now, remember, for those who want to hear a little bit more, we're doing an exclusive Patreon podcast. We do it every month. Uh, so the crew here will be here to talk about the end of One Piece, which is actually something uh, I know a lot of people have been asking our thoughts on. Uh, so we're going to be talking about how everyone gets together in couples and has kids that look exactly like them. Uh, but <laughs> you get short haircuts. Yeah, so join that on <laughs> patreon.com slash one piece podcast. Uh, and you can be part of that conversation. Uh, but why don't we round off the show? Are you guys ready? Yes. Yes. Cool. This has been episode 434 for the week of September 5th. Thank you all for coming on this Labor Day episode of the One Piece Podcast. Because, as you guys know, we don't celebrate holidays. Uh, So, thank thank you all for coming on. Uh, We went through chapter 838, episode 755. Next week, the manga is off. So, we have our special episode from MitsuriCon, the One Piece Podcast panel. It's a lot of fun. It's basically like a piece together episode with some other cool little stuff in between. Um, And so look forward to that on Monday. Uh, We might also have a few other things along with that. Maybe the Heart of Gold thing. We'll see. So make sure to check your feeds on Monday. Uh, And we'll be back the following week with our regularly scheduled manga recap, anime recap, all of that. and I want to remind everyone, we have an exclusive episode of the Patreon, One Piece Patreon podcast uh, come in, should be out, you know, when you, around the same time you hear this episode. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the One Piece end game, which is, I know, something everyone out there really wants to hear. So you can subscribe to us on Patreon to hear more about that. I uh, also want to remind people we are looking for editors and especially news reporters. So please apply. The uh, information is at onepiecepodcast.com. And also, we have One Piece Podcast merch available in our store through Redbubble. Check that out. 
The link is at the top of the page. It says store. It's at onepiecepodcast.com. Uh, so that's really everything. Uh, Sam, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on the One Piece Podcast, doing the anime recap every week, uh, occasionally writing editorials. And they can find me on AnimatedNewsNetwork.com doing the daily streaming reviews for One Piece and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable. They can also find me on Twitter at Lucky Chainsaw. Which I'm finally catching up a little with. Uh, I love JoJo. Anyway, uh, we also have the band Even Stevens with us. Let's start with uh, Stephen Paul. Where can people find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Translatosaurus if you so desire. Um, and that is it. Uh, <laughs> Steve, uh, where could people find you? You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram, Steve Yurko, all one word. Yeah, that's that's the quickest round off I've heard from Steve. Uh, and what else? What else do I have to say? I, find I me. I don't know. Enjoy me. <laughs> Enjoy the gift of Yurko. Drink it in, man. <laughs> okay, we gotta we gotta stop with those Yurko <laughs> drinks. Uh, Roger, where can people find you? Yurkaritas. Yurkaritas. <laughs> So people I can make find your karitas now. <laughs> people can find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Rogers Base, and most importantly, YouTube at Rogers Base. I do uh, weekly reviews for both the anime and the manga of One Piece. I'm also covering Boku no Hero Academia now. There's a new Attack on Titan chapter that's going to drop soon. And Nintendo News has been all over the place this month because of Tokyo Game Show. So if you like anything related to gaming or anime, I would highly suggest subscribing. And also, uh, while I'm here, I really want to say thank you to everybody from the One Piece podcast and the listener base who has subscribed to me. I'm very, very close right now to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is wow. unbelievable to me. You guys have been incredible. And as a thank you, I put together a huge One Piece giveaway in which I'm giving away a Portrait of Pirates Bellamy Sailing Again figure. I'm giving away the Zoro, the Child Zoro Portrait of Pirates figure, a signed copy of One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 for PS4, and because it's my favorite arc in the series, the entirety of the Impelled Down arc in the official English translation. So uh, if you guys want that, it's one big giant prize package. I'm giving it away to one of my subscribers. You can go check on my Twitter. Oh, and I actually think the One Piece podcast guys retweeted it as well. So yeah, just look down the feed. Yeah, you'll find it. Um, just I wanted to say thank you to everybody. You've been amazing. And here's to the next 100,000. So there you go. Thank you. Congrats, Roger. Um, Thanks. <laughs> that's, that's a big number. Um, so, Ed, where could the good people find us? Well, you are Zach underscore Logan on Twitter. I am Edward E. Fastizio. The podcast is at onepiecepodcast.com. Twitter.com, YouTube.com, and Facebook.com slash One Piece Podcast. One Piece Podcast at gmail.com is our email address. One Piece Podcast is our Skype name. Reddit.com slash r slash One Piece Podcast. Leave us some feedback there, some piece together. Um, subscribe on SoundCloud. Subscribe on Google Play. Subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, or call us on our phone number. Zach? And that phone number is 347-497-MAJI. MAJI. MAJI. That, that phone number again is 347-497-6254. Call anytime. Anytime. Call anytime. With, with your questions, comments, theories, and your biscuit recipes, which I actually would really like, um, as provided they're <laughs> the Cracker Barrel kind, guys. Um, great episode today, you guys. Looking forward to the next one. And for the One Piece Podcast, my name is Zach. My name is Ed. And my name is Steve. We'll see you next week, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See ya. Cracker.